Good evening, everyone, and we want to welcome you to the Tuesday, November 18th meeting of the Municipal Budget Committee. If everyone would rise and pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you all. Tonight, as you know, is another workshop on the budget, and this evening we are going to be dealing with um, the Department of Public Works, as we call one of the big three. Before we do that, I'd like to go around the table and have everyone introduce themselves, um, starting in Way Corner with Mr. Pierce. Hello, Michael Pierce. Hey, Jerry's and I here. Joe Bizrowski. Sonny Kravitz. Jim Wardell. Brian Lapham. John Rice, Secretary. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Mike Plo. Peter LaBranche. Jones. Bob Ladd. Richard Renio. Glenn Farrell. Jamal Lachlan. Dave Wood. I'm um, Keith Noyes, Public Works Director. Chris Jacobs, my deputy. And also, we have Tristan McGinnis, my uh, operations coordinator. And uh, the other two abandoned me, so. <laughs> <laughs> the smart ones. <laughs> Good evening, Keith. Thank you for joining us. And Chris and Teresa. Just a second here. We have plenty of things in front of us to look at. All right, we've got a little a new little structure this year, insofar as we afforded our members the opportunity to send you out questions ahead of time to come in prepared with. Um, before we start to move the budget, I'm just going to explain the process tonight. We've had some questions on it. Um, there are a few more questions than there were in, in past weeks to a single individual, of course, because this department is in fact so large, so that we're not spending two hours on the questions before we get into the discussion and the presentation of the budget or the presentation discussion as it is. I'm going, these are broken down into different areas, administration and so forth. We're going to take them separately and give Mr. Noyes the opportunity to read the questions, answer the questions that he was given. He might have some questions about the questions. Um, and then go into his presentation on that part of the budget. I'm going to ask no for no cross conferencing tonight, um, as well as to stay on the subject and stay within the section that we're in. Sometimes, you know, we get tempted to jump ahead. Please don't do that because it becomes very confusing if we are to get the questions answered, get the presentation, and at the end go around the table and ask the questions that, of course, some of you may still have or may be developed tonight. Um, with that being said, who's? Page 91. Page 91. 91. Stats on 91. Yep. And we're moving which page? 101? At the end? Uh, oh, it's I go to page 90, 91. 95. Right. It's, what? Stat on 91. Yeah, uh, page 91. Right. But they're moving. But to your question, my question, number here. Page 95. Oh, I see. 95, yeah. Thank you. Mike. <laughs> So Madam Chairman, if I'm clear, when we take this up by sections, we're going to go to just the major <coughs> headline of each. In other words, right now, highways and streets is 4311. That's the top category for that. Right. Is that how we're going to break it down? We'll go 4311, 4312, yes. right down the line, mm -hmm. right? Okay, highways and streets, and I move 1,506,153. Thousand. Second. Okay. Well, Keith, are you able to follow along in the section in the questions? So we'll let you open with that. Okay. Um, so the first question, what specific raises uh, involved wage increase? Three. 
That's a result of 1.25% uh, non-union raises, 1.25% for the Teamsters, and 3.25% for the S, uh, SEA employees. That also includes step increases within those raises. They get certain employees, because of the length of time, get step increases. I did not go through, take the time uh, to, um, to split them up by job title and percentage. Um, so that's really the information that I have for you. If you have a specific question, we don't. We have not hired any new employees. This is all contractual, or selectmen's uh, decision on what those union rate, what the uh, non-union, well, what all the raises are. So if you have a specific question about a, a specific uh, question about a specific job title, I can give you that. But I, I just got these things at 10:30 this morning and had a, had enough time just getting through this list and get prepared for tonight. So I do not have the time to go and develop a list of every single employee and what their uh, percentage is. But basically, it is the non-union employees that only includes my immediate management team, which is Chris. Uh, Mike Doobie and Mike Jingris and myself received 1.25 and the Teamsters is, um, I can go through those people but not the, you know, the of the, the other employees. I think the important thing we're looking at here is that that 9.03 is just a change from last year's budget to this budget because we had some things hanging out there but no one is in fact getting a 9% raise. There, no. Everything is... The highest increase is is what one and a half. I believe it's three point two five for the SEA employees. Three point two five, and that would be a union contract. That yes, but like I said, just keep in mind also that even if you add it up with the number of employees, some employees got step increases as well, so they would actually, in fact, get, in theory, get more than a three point two five percent raise. Is there catch up in this area, Keith? Pardon me? Is there any catch up in this area? Catch up. Catching up. You know, we're catching up with steps or just the steps they're entitled to. The, the way the union contract worked is that because for the last seven years, the SEA employees haven't been getting raises. So some of them are jumping ahead because the way the steps are set up is based on length of time. So if they were in, say, um, step one, for being here for three years, but now they're here 10 years, they're actually jumping up to that step that would be in the 10-year category. Is that what you're talking about? Well, yeah, because yeah. how many years do they go without a contract? It's my understanding, seven years. Seven years without a contract, <clears throat> and that's what I mean. That catch-up yes, yes, is yes. reflected in this amount. It is. Not that there's exorbitant raises here. Just right. the fact that they're catching up with steps. Right. So it's an atypical year. Right. All right. I think that answers my question on that one. Uh, can you indicate, or you indicate 17 people are on this line item? Yeah, and we got that 17 here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and S&D, uh, S&D stands for Sewer and Drains uh, Division. Now, Keith. None of these show up as contractual on the default budget, mm -hmm. which they should, right? Identify themselves. I as would defer that to Christy on that question right. there. Well, he, he, he put I, out I, to raise this, Christy. The default budget doesn't show anything here as contractual mm -hmm. for uh, administration on the very first line. Forty-two forty point one point one one zero. I think on all the wages, it's just noted as wages. Well, no, some of them, you get the words contractual on a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> I did, but I don't think on the wages that, um, I don't see contractual by any of the wage lines. I think it's, I just, most of the notes were kept the same as what uh, Mike had had last year. Um, but on most of the, on all the wage lines, it literally just says wages. It does not say contractual. Yeah, you're right there. But they are contractual, uh, most of them are contractual because they are related to collective bargaining agreements. I see that. Oh. Now, are the step increases that are relative to, long, to longevity, are they baked into the CBA as well? Yes, they are. All right, Keith, we'll let you move on. Sure. Uh, B, building maintenance, hydraulic lift, $15,000. Please explain. 
That lift is approximately 30 years old. It's a hydraulic lift. Uh, we have it inspected and the uh, pistons are leaking. It's totally corroded. Uh, it's to the point of being unsafe uh, for our employees. It has a 15,000 pound weight limit. Um, and it's just something that's been long overdue to, to be replaced. Um, what, what, where, is it, where is it located? It's right in the first bay. If you well, actually, if you go into my office, right to the left, it's yeah. it's right there. So you're lifting your vehicle. And it's up yes. Like yeah. It's, it's in the garage. It's, right? yeah, it's in the garage. For it's vehicle, not in my office. For vehicle, no. no, I mean it's for vehicle lifting. Right. 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 Yeah. So um, so it's you know a productivity issue, but mainly it's a safety issue. Are you buying a new one? Yes. Gas and diesel fuel need adjustment. Well, that's the, the old, this is the suggestion that was made here a few weeks ago that the gas prices are falling. They're like 282, 285 a gallon right now, regular. Right. I test 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. Well, when so I came up here that we would be yeah. looking for it. Now they're going back up again. When I, um, yes, and when I prepared my budget, I went on the, uh, as I do every year, the Department of Energy's um, website, and they have a specific. Uh, U.S. Energy Administra Information Administration, and they have what is the outlook for gasoline prices for 2014 and 2015, and pretty much they're saying the projected projection for average retail price in 2015 is 339. So it's not thinking that we're going to be getting it in the two dollar range for next year, and we have to plan for the whole year. So. Um, the town manager and I went through those, and we looked at last year, you know, historical use and the numbers that we came up with. In fact, I think he adjusted a couple of my numbers even upwards a little bit more to, to what, cover any. Uh, what did you use last year? Do you remember? What did I use for the formula last year? I I go by this every year. I go on this website and I get an idea of what the. How you know what the prices are going to be doing? No, Whether, I mean I understand that. But yeah, do I don't remember off the top of my head. I, I don't Price remember exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, so you're using that three thirty nine? No, what I'm using is that is I looked at that at what the gas uh, what the gas prices were when I prepared the budget, and then I looked at this. This was about average. So what we are using. What we're seeing out in the, uh, you know, for consumer prices right now. So, I just looked at it like there's not going to be a dramatic increase or a decrease. So we just based it on historical numbers. But the gas prices, we go through the state of New Hampshire. The state, we get the state's bid, which is a pretty good deal, and we do the best we can. But it's very hard to project what the gas prices are going to be doing. So there's no you know, real easy formula to use to pinpoint what those prices for both diesel and gas are going to be. So it, it's somewhat of a guesstimate yeah, we're, at we're this point have to hold in time. On that, I think right now until we get a better fix on it. Yeah, I'm just trying to establish how we derived it a number okay, last year. If we're that, uh, using this report, Jamie is working. That I, I just use this as a guide. I don't use yeah, that. I don't say, okay, it's 3.39, and we use that. This is just a guide for trucking companies to look at for their projections for the following year. Mm -hmm. But it's at least something to tell us. I mean, if that said that they're going to drop down to 250 or go up to 450, then I'd be more concerned, and we adjust them, you know, accordingly. So it's just kind of a rough guide. Do you, do you you track how many gallons of fuel you're using, your gasoline or diesel? Yes. If you're not, you do? Well, yeah, we get reports. How many <laughs> gallons? Yes. How many gallons? Yes. Yeah, the reports come back that way. <coughs> okay, good. That's mm -hmm. good. So then you have a, a good number to multiply by if right. you get a number that you believe in. Right. And, and that's across the board for, you know, police, fire. We all buy from the same place. Yeah. Okay, if we understand that, we're just... Well, where is that location? By we the know way? it's a magic ball this year, especially since all of a sudden gas prices took such a huge dip. Mm -hmm. But we also Liberty know Lane, that the state, the state buys a quantity, so that price is not Liberty necessarily Lane. reflected. Mm -hmm. However, there was a formula, and I don't know that we saw the gallon price that it ended up at last year that was put into the budget. Yeah, I, I, if I may, there, there are a couple of different ways that people do this, and, and again, with some of the ups and downs of the default budgets. I can speak to my old, old uh, budget. We, we kind of 
went by usage as opposed to breaking it down by gallon. Right. And in general, the way the state contract works is that protects us from a huge spike going up. It's allowing us to get a max ceiling where we're going to be on gallon price. Mm -hmm. We have previously run into this where we're buying from the state. We're not exclusive to them. Right. Where the pump price went lower and it was more advantageous to use a commercial buyer and do the paperwork to submit for the tax differential. We have done that in the past. That's always an option for us. It's finding that break point because there's a substantial amount of paperwork to be done to recoup that tax money. So it's just, I, I agree with Jerry, we should take a look at this more globally than we are. Yeah. We're just trying to find out when that contract expiration period is so we know what that next cap will be. Yeah. And we've, we've all agreed here already, Keith, we're not picking you apart. We're just trying to yeah. get all the information we so can. Goes, goes globally, when we get yeah. done, no, it's fine. Mm -hmm. we're just going to go through all, all the fuel lines. Yeah, I got it. Do you know a time frame when that would be done? What's at the state contract? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're trying to pin that down. I, my recollection is sometime late fall is when those those are updated. But again, I, I don't want to be locked in. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, vehicle maintenance ninety seven thousand. Need to tell on cost increases. Facts, please. Um, really, well, the good news is that you're doing. Uh, Mike Jingris, the maintenance manager, is is got a computer program that we've bought that we can track all the maintenance uh, materials and labor cost on all equipment so as equipment comes in whether it's uh, from police fire <laughs> recreation building inspection or public works we develop a work order and we track that so we can at any point in time get a good for the first time get a good record of all the uh, costs that go into maintaining our vehicles up until recently up until we Developed this program, or bought, got this program, we were just tracking the material cost. That being said, I think the reasons that you're seeing a dramatic increase are for a couple of reasons. One is that now, for the first time, instead of having just one full time mechanic and one part, uh, one uh, mechanics helper, we have two professional mechanics, which allows us to do more work on vehicles. So more work is actually getting done where work was not getting done on some of our vehicles uh, in the past just because we didn't have the manpower to do that, that work. So that results in more parts and, and cost to those vehicles. The other factor really is is, is the uh, average age of our vehicles is 12 years old, and our, we're not keeping up with even though we're spending money on a yearly basis on replacing our vehicles and, and, and equipment, we're really not keeping up uh, with a good uh, replacement plan as far as being able to uh, replace equipment when it should be uh, replaced. And, uh, vehicles, and this is what I've been saying about the town's infrastructure since I've been here, is that the older it gets, it accelerates in more cost to, um, to, to, to repair it and to maintain it. So we're, we're trying to catch up with, with the vehicles so that we're having them replaced on a regular basis, uh, but it's difficult between the default budget and, you know, the limitations that we have on the overall, you know, worn article amount. Can you talk about what the major driver here with this 40,000, the major repair is 40,000. Can you give a couple, two, three examples on what made up that 40,000? Mike, you, you have some, right? I don't know if Mike speak to that. Jump right in there. Sorry. Can you repeat the question, please, sir? Yeah. So I'm looking at the uh, vehicle maintenance. It's 97,000. The big driver is the 40,000. For major repairs, and I'm just wondering what what kind of major repairs took place to make up that you're, you're actually this is a forecasted budget. So, mm -hmm. what kind of major repairs do you think are coming down your coming your way? Or well, the thing is, Mrs. Zanoy's the average age of our fleet is 12 years old. Yeah, that's what you said. Uh, um, due to inclement conditions, we have corrosive conditions now on all of our vehicles, so rust and corrosion is a huge factor. Um, to forecast what are coming down, I would. I can't. I cannot give you that, but I can see with a lot of our stuff, it's a lot of transmission issues, um, a lot of rust. We have oil pans that are failing. Um, but you had some specific ones that you mentioned yeah, to me. What have you spent this year for major repairs? On Let's put it that year. way. Um, for major repairs. Yeah. So take a look at that. <laughs> uh, I can find it. <laughs> 
Gotcha. I have four examples of some vehicles that were pretty substantial. Okay, can we, can we hear Yep. Um, for one of our vehicles, we had some substantial transmission issues that wound up being about $3,000 to fix mm -hmm. there. Um, two of our dump trucks were both the Max, which one is 26 years old and one is 24 years old. Um, in total, that vehicle's been about $20,000 over its lifetime, and then within the last year, it's been about $3,000 due to suspension and exhaust. Number 42 has had um, fuel tank problems. It's all the springs have had to be replaced. Pretty much a hydraulic hose over uh, rebuilt, and that one's been about $2,100. And our other Mack truck ran about $3,200, and that was due to the fact of brakes all the way around the brake cans were literally rusting out of it. And that's a very common thing we're finding with a lot of our trucks is the air brake system is literally rotting out of it. <clears throat> okay, looking back on uh, 12 and 13, 96,000, 97,000, 96 and 12, 97 and 13, and 14 due to day 75, so 97 isn't really that far out of line. No, I, um, I, I can tell you since I've been here since 2013, 2013 was a very expensive year. Our, our back truck was approaching over $10,000 for repairs. Now, you're happy with your program on very, preventative maintenance? Very. You know exactly what vehicles you have, mm -hmm. load them in yep. there, the frequency, have, every, yep. frequency of preventative maintenance, what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Somebody's done it, mm -hmm. signed off on it with yep. labor hours and yep. material. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. And, and the fact of the matter is we have a lot of vehicles to maintain, oh, and they all add up. About a, yeah. <laughs> Mike about. knows that. Yeah, He's got the equipment. Yeah, got the all vehicles all pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, sir. All right. Uh, yeah. We talk about uh, well, stormwater requirement. Any other questions on vehicle? I'm going to let you keep going on the okay. those questions. Stormwater uh, requirements. Uh, Chris has been managing that program. I'm going to let him talk a little bit about uh, why we're budgeting forty thousand dollars for that. For that That's program. a ninety-five ninety-six. The. Um, EPA has just released uh, the stormwater permit for the state of Massachusetts. Thanks. I wonder where that was. And um, it pretty much duplicates. We've been informed that the New Hampshire one will duplicate what's in the Mass one. We did ask in the last round for some major changes. Um, there was some housekeeping changes with how they put the permit together, but essentially it's going to be a very onerous permit to, to maintain. Um, we're facing that we have 160 stormwater outfalls around town. They want us to catalog all 160 of them. Catalog meaning put a sign up, post, um, <coughs> picture. They want it added to an asset management plan, something similar to what we're doing for the vehicles. And then on top of that, they want us to grab samples every time it rains, um, at least for the first year, to, and test for seven uh, parameters, uh, pH, chloride, uh, some chemicals, uh, mainly copper and heavy metals. And then there it just t would, will tend to snowball, meaning that whatever you find, you have to then track down, investigate, and eliminate. Um, the other major factor of it is it's a heavy bookkeeping process. So um, specifically what they're going to be looking for is within every acre of our town, they want to know how much is paved and how much isn't. <clears throat> and then they want you to update it every year to tell them if XYZ Hotel went in and they took out three buildings and put up seven and impervious area is 80 percent they literally want you to go with a housekeeping record and keep track of this and then i'm seeing from some of the members that you're understanding that it's going to be a very burdensome thing last year we had in 55,000. Um, we trimmed it down to 40 only because we realized at that time that the epa was not going to be able to react in a timely fashion and so they were, we probably didn't need all that money um, I have started with, we did order the signs to track the 160 
uh, outfalls, but we didn't go any further with that. We didn't buy the posts. We didn't start with any of that. We didn't order any of our uh, sampling equipment that we're going to need. We're basically going to have to equip about five teams of our own staff to go out and sample when these things occur. Mm -hmm. um, the sewers you're talking about. Stormwater. No, storm 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 I mean, the, the, the drains and the roads. The drains, yeah. right. Chris, I'm listening to you as we're going back and forth between the different years. Is it possible for you to break down the, the individual cost? This is the 40000 is lumped together because we're, it seems that some things are coming out of money that has already been Correct. put in the till. And will any of that money be encumbered and move forward? Yes, we would try. I think we would try and encumber the money. Like, I know what my posts are going to cost me. I would try and like to encumber that. So it, if it well, our landing is going to be a little softer. We're just getting around to looking at the asset software that we're going to need mm -hmm. to manage this. Um, so if I had to give you of the 40000 how would I proportion it or cut my pie? I'd say 25% is going to go to lab work. 25% is going to go to field work. 25% is going to go to probably software upgrades, and the other 25% is going to be sucked up in labor. I mean, do we have actual costs on these things? All I've done is I looked at the number of areas we have, the number of outfalls we had. I looked at the uh, lab costs. We did ask the lab if you have to test these seven, seven parameters what it's going to cost me. Um, some of them can be done in-house. There's only one of the seven that I would actually leave town to be done. Mm -hmm. um, it was from that that we came up with in the, the original estimate, the 55000 And at this point, the same thing's going to happen. The, the EPA is going to lag and come in late in the year, mm -hmm. late in what I call this year, early in fiscal year 2015, and then there will be a six-month ramp-up process. When well, that happens, we'll, and we get the final permit, we'll be able to give you, a, I think, a tighter assessment. You didn't budget anything in 14 for this. Yes, we did. I don't, yeah. There's nothing there. Oh, I didn't know Stormwater that. requirements are showing the That's 2014 the budget. budget is default not, budget. Because of the default budget. The default when budget. we sat here a year ago, we talked yeah. about taking it from 55 to I think, Eileen, that the, the point, there's a couple of factors here. One is that we have yet to receive our final permit from the EPA, so we don't know exactly at this point what the requirements are going to be. But we have a, um, a number of communities in the Seacoast areas formed a group, the Seacoast Correlation for Stormwater Rules and Regulations, and Chris is a member of that group, and they get together on a monthly basis and talk about, you know, how we're going to be compliant, you know, how to be in best in compliance with these new regulations. Well, one, we don't know exactly what those regulations are. We've got an idea. But they also have been talking about costs for each community. And each community right now is somewhat of a guesstimate to what these costs are going to be because it's a brand new program. It's not something that we've had experience with. We know the major details of it that, like he said, we're going to have to be taking samples. And But they're talking about about do you have to take samples at every single event, which could happen at 2 o'clock in the morning, so we may have to have someone come in at 2 o'clock in the morning, or do you do it twice a year or something? So we're just, the, the $40,000 is definitely an estimate at this point, but it's not just a wild estimate. It is after talking to what other communities are. And if you talk to any of the other Seacoast communities, Greenland, Portsmouth, or any of the other ones, they'll, they'll tell you the same thing. Right now it's just a guesstimate, but they're trying their best to get make sure that they're going to have enough money in 2015 to meet the obligations for costs that we're going to have. And do you have an, an exact date of implementation? No. No. No, so we don't even know if it'll be. It sounds like there's a lot that has to settle down, so it may not even. Could be June of 15. Could be. Um, if you could furnish this committee with just a, a quick spreadsheet sure. on where you came up with that, how much you have left from what was put aside from last year. There wasn't anything put aside. There wasn't from anything last year. put aside. No. You requested fifty-five thousand. You used that money. No, for I ended up at forty thousand dollars. <laughs> what we ended up yeah, with when, when we went budget. to the default budget, so it took that money out of there. Okay. Because that was the first year that we put it in, so we didn't have. In 2013, 
is what the default budget went to. In 2013, we didn't have any money in there. Mm -hmm. So our budget, this year's budget, is the 2013 budget. There was nothing in there in for there. that. Right. But okay. we did put in for this, the last, for the 2014 budget, and it was approved. Well, let me tell you. I mean, uh, yeah, 2000, no, 2014, no. 2014, we had put in $40,000. We took 20 of it out. Right, we took 20 of it to do Fairfield, Bruce, and Belmont. Right. Hot top. We had this conversation last yeah. year. Yeah, right. He's right. right. The same yeah. conversation. Mm -hmm. and, the, and at the time, you didn't know when the regulations were going to go into effect. Right. And then you took 20 of that 40. Remember when we yep. okay. discussed okay. moving okay. the road, yep. pay, yep. paving the three roads? And, yeah, that's yeah. the same money. Yep. And, and because we had a default budget, it doesn't show up. It doesn't show up. Right. And it never happened. Right. So, so just so I'm clear, the signs that you've gone ahead and audited, is coming out of where? We took it out of sign budget. Are <laughs> you treating the water at the wastewater treatment plant? Any mm -hmm. issues show up in the testing there? We treat <laughs> toilet sink water at the wastewater water. treatment plant. We don't treat parking lot and roadside water, and that's just, this is what they're talking. The EPA is talking about. This is drainage water. The, the money for the signs came out of this account, but I need to offset it because there's no money because of the default budget. I need to offset it from <coughs> other areas in the budget. Mm -hmm. So it didn't necessarily, I just correct Chris, it didn't yeah. necessarily come out of the, 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 the uh, assigned budget. <coughs> if you look at our budget report, it, it actually came out. In fact, I'm not sure. It doesn't show up there, nope. but it does show up on my um, report that I get, my appropriation report that I just got, the expense out of that item. I know that I have to offset that by um, you know, underspending some other account. Mm -hmm. okay. We realize that, and the only thing is, is that when there is no money in one line, mm -hmm. it needs to come from another line. And there's been a lot of echoing about roads and repairs, and I don't want to get into it in detail now, but I think it's very important that we know when you're buying something that there was no funds for, it's coming out of somewhere. Street signs, you say? This, no, no, yeah, no, no, no. I'm just saying. I think it's important for us to know where this money is being shifted from. Right, um, and, and I know that you're gonna, you know, I know because of the questions that you're gonna be. There's been questions <coughs> about why aren't we spending money like the twenty-six thousand dollars for sidewalk repair, or why didn't we spend the full amount that was budgeted for um, the uh, storm drain system repairs or the sewer repairs? And in this world that I live in with budgeting, I still have to, you know, nothing, it, you can't pinpoint, I've got over a $5 million budget. It's hard to pinpoint every single item, but I am very mindful of how I spend the money. So when I spend money out of an account, I make sure that there's money in a different account mm -hmm. that's available to use. But on top of that, and I know we're probably a little premature, but I might as well get it out on the table right now, whether it's the sidewalks or storm drain account or sewer replacement account, I still I've, I'm already over on my snow removal budget from from three months January February and March. I've still got to be geared up financially to have enough money for the end of November and for all of December. So if I spend one hundred fifty thousand dollars in for three months. It's conceivable that two months, where, you know, fair enough, we're halfway through the month, could cost us $100,000, just a couple of snowstorms. So I'm holding off spending money in certain areas because I don't want to go over on the overall budget because I have no contingency money available. That's the problem when you have, for public works, when you have a budget that's based on a calendar year versus a fiscal year, the communities that have it as a fiscal year, you figure you, you, you get the whole budgeted, you know, the whole winter budgeted. But for me, it's every year since I've been here, it's been a conundrum because I'm always right on the line of, um, you know, going over on my budget. So I think it's prudent to hold back on some of the non-essential expenditures to make sure that you know, if we do have a major snowstorm or a couple of major snowstorms, then we're going to have sufficient funds not to go over overall on my budget. Keith, what did you do with that? What did you do with that crystal ball I gave you? <laughs> and we do realize, Keith, that this was a very difficult year. That you know, pretty much blew the budget before we even, we got halfway through the year where snow removal was 
concerned, so we'll all pray that we get Where through. are you holding back on? <laughs> Just what I said, uh, the sidewalks, we, I, I even I put out a bid to do the sidewalk work. We didn't have one bidder that came in to do the work because I was hoping to be able to, at a minimum, towards the end of the year, see how the snowstorms went, and then I, if I got someone to bid on it and the contract work, then I would go ahead and put in a PO at the end of the year and do the work in the spring to get no bidders. But in the other, th the, the three major areas that I've held back in is um, the, the storm drain system repairs and the sewer repairs and the sidewalks. Those are the three major areas that I've with. Um, and, and this is through discussions with the town manager before he uh, left for a surgery. We talked about this very issue, and he agreed with me that I had to refrain from spending that money to make sure, to the best of my ability, that we don't go into the red come December 31st. Thank you. You're, you're 906000 underspent as we speak through October. For the entire budget? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's still well, that's, yeah, yeah, but if you look at the entire budget, percentage of where we're at for the end of, I think it's the end of um, October. Se uh, October. We still have November and December. If you project that out, we're just right on cue. Without any snowstorms, without spending that money, we're, <coughs> we're right where we um, should be in theory. If I didn't have to worry about the snowstorms, I'd be fine. I'd go ahead and spend the money because I'm a big advocate of, of spending the money on the infrastructure. You know, but Keith, I remember sitting in 2012, and you went through the same routine. We've got to get, we've got to inventory our drains. We're going to have to clean the drains on a regular basis. We are. We're going to have to test them on a regular basis, and we're going to have to track all of that stuff and log it in. And we're going to have to, you know, you know, be on top of it because of storm water one, storm water two, storm water three, or whatever. I've heard the same story tonight. We are. We are. This year, you asked a question about the next question on the engineering services about the uh, temporary technician. That was, um, we hired a, 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 um, an intern out of UNH to come down with my engineering technician, and they've spent the entire summer going out, taking, you've probably seen them around town with the, tra with the uh, level, and they've been taking elevations. We've surveyed the sewer system, the storm drain system. We've made maps. Now we're going around to take the elevation. So we're continuing. Don't think we're not doing any work. I'm just talking about the major projects for stormwater repairs and stuff. That is, is, is non-essential at this point compared to <coughs> covering payroll costs and covering, uh, you know, fuel bills and, and uh, bills to dispose of our solid waste. Uh, I don't have any more comments on that. I, I'm just saying I've heard the story before. It should be finished by now. We should be done. There should be no 40K. For okay. Jerry, there'll be no finish. No, well, no it's ongoing. Be, no, 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 it's but not you, gonna, you talked about like a, a non-recurring effort to, to, to go on. It is on. a non-recurring effort because the infrastructure, infrastructure right. is in such rough shape. Thank you. Keith, is there anything else you want to add to this section? Not on that section. Not on that section. Okay. Well, then... There have been some silent members of the cast here. Michael, do you have any questions? Oh, I have a whole bunch of questions. And uh, I want to go back and touch that 9.03% increase. I'm just totally uh, confused about that. If you get 9.03%, uh, let me get back on the right pages here, because I was ready to ask all these questions when you were covering it. Now I've lost my page. 92. I lost, 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 lost my mind, too. Do you want us anyway, to come back um, to you at the end? No, uh, I'll begin. Um, I'm looking at the administration wages a 9.03 on OBS 10, just to make it real quick and simple. Yeah. I don't understand how you can get 9.03% if nobody gets anything but 3% increases, because 3% times the whole crowd would be a 3%. So it was please explain, uh, please, excuse me, uh, please uh, explain that how you get the 9.03. Because there are step increases. And how much are they percentage-wise? They, I don't have that broken down right at the front right right now, but those are part of the 9.03. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's not a result of adding any new staff. There's no new staff proposed for 2015. I got that part, but that's all contractual, Mike. Excuse I, me. I understand Mike, that. One just minute. One minute. Um, Jamie would like to add yeah, something. Mike, if I could just add something to that that might help you is that keep in mind how long the SEA was without a contract. 
that when they settle that, for example, an employee, if there's multiple steps, if an employee's at step one and when that contract will expire, and then seven years later, they may have taken multiple jumps. So you gotta understand that there's a, there's a whole bunch of possibilities. It's not a straight linear number. Somebody may have been on step number five and then move seven years later up to a different step or across two steps. So that's why it's not linear like you're doing. So what you're saying then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is that some people got over 10% raises to make it 903. There's a possibility. I think some employees did get a 10% raise that haven't got raises for seven years. I think that's a possibility. Okay. Can I just add something in there, Mike? I went over it before, okay? When we think of a raise, it's doing the same job year to year. What these people had attained was steps in the union, which is something different. And they achieved their tests or their steps with certain criteria. While they weren't while we were not passing their contracts, they still proceeded as far as attaining their steps, they just didn't get paid for it. So it's basically retroactive. So basically that's why I said it's a catch up year. It was well, not, not retroactive, no. No. Well it's not retroactive, but kind of it brings it. It them from is, here. Though. It, these are the I steps you went from here to here. Yeah, I know. Okay, so it made a huge, uh, what well, looks like a huge increase for maybe some people, but it's for everything they didn't get, and quite honestly, they missed the money in those years. They're only being paid at the level that they've attained currently. And that have been, I mean, I understand that completely, having yeah. been there, done that. Um, so the bottom line is that some probably got in excess of 10% with no sweat. That's all I really want to know because 9.03 percent is a huge increase, considering that you mentioned only two or three percent, and then talked about steps. But like you say, if you add two or three steps in there, there are going to be some that got substantial increases. Mm -hmm. Okay, that explains that one. Okay, now back on the maintenance and so forth. I was concerned not so much about the maintenance cost itself because I know that. As vehicle gets older, things just sort of fall apart, like some of the cars I have. They have to have a little extra attention. But I'm concerned by the fact that we have so many pickup trucks. We have a pickup truck for about almost every person. There's 18 pickups or something like that. I went through this, I think, the last year, the year before with you about this. You said, well, we had 19. We traded one in, so we had one less than we had before when you bought the car that really graded me, and I won't get into that. But so why do we need 18 pickup trucks if we're having a maintenance problem to start with? Are there any pickup trucks in the budget for 2015? No, I mean, if, if we... We're cutting back, Mike. The answer is we're cutting back. We have been, Chris and I, and with our managers, have been looking at all our vehicles. Yeah. And that's one reason why we haven't put any pickup trucks in the... Um, budget for 2015 because we're evaluating mm -hmm. the use of all our trucks. We bought GPS units that we've put in our snow One of our driving forces for our fleet mm -hmm. is um, snow plowing. Mm -hmm. so, and that's a huge cost. So now we're evaluating. We've put GPS units, I think we've got four of them, and we've got it set up that each storm will track it and we We'll map out the the um, the, um, the routes, and we're trying to balance out the routes because what we found for what we found going through this GPS system is that some cloud routes were taking four to five hours, and some were taking one and a half hours. So Chris has been putting a lot of effort into this to balance those out. But that's only one component. The other component is, should we have a pickup truck doing it, or should we have a, um, a, 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 a one-ton doing it? One ton's more productive in some respects, but the thing that works against us in Hampton is the roads. You can't, you know, some of our roads are so, you know, dead ends and so narrow that you really can't get it. So it's, it's complicated, but what I can assure you is, and this is again, not to keep repeating myself, but we are looking at our whole fleet overall and trying to trim out the number of vehicles that we have. We're working on that as we speak. Well, I think that's good because I remember last year or the year before last, maybe it was last year, we got a lot of complaints about from uh, residents of the town saying, oh, they come by with a pickup truck and they did a look, quote unquote, not such a hot job, in other words. It didn't do as well as they expected. And I think there's a merit to that because when you have a big truck pushing the plows with the weight, 
it's going to do a better job of plowing the road. I don't think there's any debate about that. So you're looking at that real close to see where we can fit in a bigger truck to eliminate some of the pickup truck complaints that we had. Is yes. that what you're doing? Yes. Okay, good. That's and, good. And the other effort that we have, and, you'll, and there's another question here that Jerry had about the uh, why is the, uh, um, I can't remember the name of the, under the winter plowing out contractual services, why would that go up? What we're trying to do is now, for the first time, we're privatized two of our routes. We've always had one privatized downtown um, parking lots. Mm -hmm. But by privatizing the, those two routes, we're not going to be have to buy those two trucks. If, if we had, if you didn't have to look at the capital cost, it's cheaper for us to do it. But I know that it's cheaper to contract some of those out so that we don't have to make that capital investment. So what, what my point is that we're trying. We're really trying in house. Believe me, I'm I'm a great believer in not having any more vehicles than we absolutely need. Mm -hmm. But we have to look at you know does it make sense this year to sell a vehicle or let it run out you know its age and break down or whatever. There's a lot of factors that go into it. I know. But we are making an effort to cut back on our fleet. No, I think that's probably a good idea. Thank you, Keith, for that. And there was a couple other questions. I was looking at highway maintenance on page 98. We haven't got to that yet. I'm sorry, no. that's the next one. Is that part of this or not? No. 98? No. Okay, so next section. Okay, I had a couple of other questions, too. Can I come back later with a couple more questions? On this section? Yeah. Yeah, Just on this to section. keep it going. Yeah. Um, Joe? Jerry, I'm skipping over. No, my, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, my only question is, in your regular wages, you said you, you no new positions, but yet you have a new position laborer and new position light equipment operator. So it's got pulled from the budget. Okay. No, no questions. I'm sure that it'll all, it'll all come out. So. <laughs> I have a couple of comments. I think you guys do a great job, the staff. I think you're dealing with an older fleet that you have to keep maintenance, and I think that's a pain. I think you have to deal with Mother Nature, which you can't tell what Mother Nature is going to do, and plus you have to deal with government agencies, and you don't know what the heck they're going to do. So I think I think being, you know, looking for an exact, 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 I don't think you can, you, I agree, I don't think you can do it. I think you can Still come up the pin best down. estimate to come up with. <clears throat> Very good I, I think you do a really good job of doing that, and uh, well, I commend you. Thank you, we're trying to do the best with we can. Dealing with Mother Nature and the government. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've got a couple of things here. The first one is a document issue. Page 94. You have a, under supplies and expenses, you have a line item for 4311.1.680. 680? Yeah. Doesn't exist. Supplies, bearing. Line of expense. 430. 430, okay. I'm just. I'm sure it's just a mistake, but there's no conforming. Mm -hmm. Is that what's under in the budget? Six one zero. What well, page are we on again? Yeah, it so does. Page page I would assume so. Ninety four. So it just needs to be six one zero. Chrissy, can we ask you on that one? Over there. It appears that. It's a, yeah, I'm like, just. That's all I was bringing up for. Which one typo. is the correct one? Six one zero or six eight zero? I am looking that up for you right now. Thank I you. believe it would be the six one zero is correct. Okay. Yeah, actually, the two on the bottom there are both wrong. Right. That's the title. Is the backup of this? Yeah, twenty three thousand ties. Oh, I just noticed. Six one. Certain things pop out in your head, I guess. And the building is either should be six thirty. So the six one zero is correct, and the six three zero is correct. Yeah, it's just the six the six one zero and not six eight zero. Um, could you please explain the reimbursed maintenance labor? Yeah. I'll do that. Yes. Under that's on page ninety one. Yes, that that's when we do work on the other departments: mm -hmm. police, fire, building inspection. We do a cross billing to help cover to help subsidize the cost of the additional uh, full time mechanic, <laughs> professional mechanic, and the part time mechanic. I so see. when the police department comes in and they have a cruiser that comes in for maintenance, we track that. And we also will send them a bill for that work, and that shows up as a credit there to help offset the cost of that service. 
I, my understanding was they were paying for this. They are. It wasn't coming out of your budget. It isn't. Yeah, it's a negative. That's right. That's why well, it's I'm a negative. questioning. That's, right. That's why it shows up as you know, a credit. budget. It's a negative. So that's being reduced from the line, bottom line. Right. That's kind of and it's represented in what revenues? Is that how it's going in, Christy? No. It's just reducing that budget, like you said. But then you're charging out police and fire. Yep. So it's being charged. So in essence, it's being charged against the county of police or fire or recreation. Right. Okay, or and then it's going into their budget as a negative. As an expense, that. yeah. Credit. That's what I'm just trying to follow. This. <laughs> credit. This as one. a credit, right. Hmm. So they have an item in the, their budget yes. for, just like we do, vehicle maintenance. Mm -hmm. So that would be a reduction in that right. account, and then it's transferred over to help offset. The, we're not trying to make any money off the no. deal. We're just trying to offset the cost. I'm just trying to hands. follow the right. line right. of where this is all Yeah, an internal offset. Going. So that... Yeah. Um, Back to Mr. Pierce's, you also have four vehicles you're asking for in warrant articles. We're not talking. We're not, going, we're not, we're not doing warrant, warrant articles right no, now. No, but I'm just bringing that fact up. Well, that none of them. Are, the, 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 the point is that none of them are vehicles. Yeah, but then not one of them is a pickup truck. That was my point. <laughs> Brian, that'll just confuse tonight. We'll yeah. leave it for the warrant article discussion. I'm sure we'll have plenty of conversation then. Um, good point. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I have one more question. I think. Nope, to the next one. I'll say thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a brief explanation on the overtime wages. I see. I'm not complaining about it, mind you. I like reductions like that. But the, the overage is a result of um, one thing I've done over, I think it was two years ago, was to segregate out all the um, costs associated with snow removal, and I moved money from different accounts. Before I did that, the overtime, winter overtime was spread out amongst all the accounts. So if you typically work at the transfer station, you plow snow, it would show up as a expense out of the transfer station account, wastewater, whatever. What we've tried to do is segregate that out so that we can show the community what the full you know, cost of snow plowing is. And um, we've been working on that, but one loose end was the um, some of the um, man, uh, supervisors was still out of that account, so there was ten thousand dollars approximately in that account that should have been applied to the snow overtime account, but it wasn't. But if you look at the snow overtime account, you'll see where we increased that by ten thousand dollars, and we decreased the amount that we're asking for for next year to correct that. <coughs> so we should come back and re put a note to remember that. Sure. I'll remember it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So we, systematically, we haven't reinvented the wheel. We've just put things in the place that they belong. We're, that's what we're trying to do. In other words, you reduced it in this line item and beefed it up somewhere else. Do we have in the, the snow in removal. Snow removal. Right. Should we just put it in the so that I have a problem with that. Um, we can make a notation of that. Madam Chairman, that was a question I had left. If you want me to follow up on that, I can. Uh, same question as what I was going to ask. On just this one question? You yeah, that was it. All right, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah the problem I have with this, uh, the overtime account, and I know you explained it about the snow, but it seems like I, every month of report that I re look at, it seems like it's increasing for administration. And I can't figure out why we'd be having a constant increase in administrative overtime all year long, maybe during snow removal, but what the snow stopped sometime in, I think it was March, maybe. So I'm a little confused about that because all summer long I was looking at that, and that overtime for administration just keeps creeping up. There's a couple of components there. One is the um, we have to cover the cost of overtime for the elections, and depending on how many elections there are, um, I guess next year, and I don't keep track of it, all I'm told is we have to provide resources, manpower to do the elections. But the other thing is the cost of the overtime increases as these employees get their raises as well. So the cost of the overtime 
increases for those two factors. <laughs> There's no unusual event. It's not like all of a sudden we're doing anything that out of the ordinary to require more overtime. Um, the overtime is the overtime, and if we need to provide a service or respond to emergencies, we have to do it. And it, it, it's really not a lot of control over overtime. Maybe I didn't phrase the question right. This is, is overtime in administration. I can see if you have guys out riding the snowplow trucks, yeah, they're going to get paid overtime. Maybe if you have to spend some extra money picking up the trash, and some of them, I can see that. But a supervisor getting regularly yes. scheduled overtime? Yes. They're, they're not salaried? No. 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 I don't get overtime. Chris doesn't. Right. The, the senior management team doesn't get overtime. We're non-union. We don't get any overtime. So where does this uh, overtime would be, accumulate from then? Uh, emergency call out. Say that the police department calls up and says there's a tree down on, you know, um, High Street. Yeah. Then we have to have a foreman go out, and he'll evaluate it. Do we need to call in a private, you know, um, tree, haul, tree, tree maintenance person, and do we handle it ourselves? So the first line is when the first call comes in, one of those managers will come in and evaluate the system, and then he'll decide on if he needs any support at that point. So, and just like with... Um, Voting. We need to have a supervisor come in to oversee that operation. So the foreman get the overtime? Yes. Okay, but the okay. person that comes in with a chainsaw or something, his money would come out of his own budget in some other part of that. Yeah, we, yeah. I would think that overtime time for the, the tree. List, guys, if you look at, like, if you look at count one, the regular wages, it lists out all of the types of employees that are in that account. Yeah. yeah. And you'll see there are laborers and other people in there as well, which yeah. are hourly employees. That's the administrative section they're in. So if we... A lot of our overtime call-outs are also due to, due to dig safe, where gas company calls and says we've got a leak at XY intersection. We're required by law to go out and, and map it. Why wouldn't now, that, my question though is why wouldn't that overtime be in uh, distributed to the correct allocation? In other words, like storm drainage or whatever for that particular one. Because it's not storm drainage; it's an emergency call-out by either I, Unitil or the gas right. company. So it's, and it all just comes in. Just a second on this subject. Okay, I'm I think it's the terminology that is confusing people. That's it. When you say administrative. The, the concept is we're talking about somebody sitting up in an office. Right. Maybe it should be supervisory overtime or foreman's overtime. Again, I think, I, I'm, I don't know, Mike. Maybe that's, that's probably 90% of it, yeah. Is, there, is it that? Well, the other yeah. thing, though, it's got carpenters okay. and laborers. No, when you say administrative, you think of somebody sitting at a desk. Okay. Uh, I agree. Mike, all you guys. And it's not. We've had a lot of time over on this end, and... I think we have a, a tag on this. There will always be somebody who will look at it another way. Good explanation has been given tonight, and I think we all thoroughly understand now what it is. Moving on, Mike, do you have any questions? Uh, about a year ago, you asked about a job on Barber Road for drainage. <coughs> you put the two catch bases at Sherbert Drive. Then you went down to the Victory Garden and put in a pond, a mm -hmm. few sticks of pipe, and left. Are we abandoning that job, or are you holding back on the pipe between the manholes and the pond until you have drainage money available to do that? Actually, neither. Neither? We bought the pipe. We have it in storage. <laughs> We've been bought and paid for it. It was also... It was Majority of it was paid for by uh, the developer of the Sherburn Green, yeah. Sherburn yeah. Uh, Drive. Right. Um, we put the two basins in at the Sherburn Drive because we had a deadline to get that work done before a certain date, or we had to give the money up. So we went to the other end where the water is eventually going to come out. Yeah. And started there and started laying pipe. The understanding that I have with my sewer and drain department is after they finish drain cleaning. Catch basin cleaning, sewer main televising and cleaning, storm drain cleaning when the leaves fall, and all the other myriad of tasks that we ask them to do, like clearing out all the brush, all the trees around the Victory Garden, and any other number of things that we got asked to do, that they would go back to that project. As you can see, there was no time this year to go back to that project. 
but we well, we do have plans to go back. The other problem is if it isn't done and we get another storm event, you could have <laughs> compounded the problems over well, on. Those basins that were put in at Sherburn are open bottom basins, so any water that goes in them is hopefully going to go out the bottom. Right. So, but, but the intent was to pipe it down. Oh yeah, the intent is yeah. Then that is still the intent. So the, prod, the project hasn't still fallen on through the cracks. It's on hold. Projects on the board, given given time. Now, if we don't get any snow this winter, you'll probably see them over there, because all the pipes going to be laid off the edge of pavement. We don't have to break pavement to do it, right? Except for the driveway. Uh, <laughs> but the point is, it's an allocation of time and resources. Well, I just it's just yeah, been no, a we'll long be, time. I just thought that it either fell through the cracks or oh no, I've got five or six just like that yeah. projects that I'd love to go back to. <coughs> Well, it needs to be kept on the horizon and put it in the system. It's my pet project. Pet project? Well, you know, you, come, you, yeah. you take on certain things and you want to see them done. Yeah. And then worked with the guys, came up with the design, and yeah, we want to see it done. That's it, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I have two things. The first thing is <clears throat> that I noticed there are seven sections to these questions, and we've spent over an hour. On the first section, we only haven't even finished this side of the room. So you're gonna, this is going to be a long, long meeting. Um, the other thing is, you mentioned, I heard you say, privatized plowing. Are you, are you doing that now? Bringing in somebody like Mike Pluff to contract, to contract so you have contractors? Not me. Side construction, or, or it's, it's been it's been open to be these people that have trucks. Right, we put it out to yeah. okay. we've always done the high street lot. The downtown is one of the one, two areas. I remember that. And from last, last year. year we experimented with the high street route, but, but what year, about just hiring some outside contractor privatizing to do some of the roads too? that something you well we to? did we we asked them okay. to do we, oh, yeah. ha we had them do high street oh, okay. and um okay. well in particular we uh wanted to get a grader because a grader mm -hmm. the town used to have a grader sold them sold it years ago that be that that's great to have on board to do our main arterial roads especially if you have like ice pack or something like that because that can really push down so now we have that availability to have a grader uh at our disposal so that we can, you know, do those roads there under most conditions that we didn't have the ability before. Yeah. The, the thing when, when we were talking about trucks before, and you, one truck was 37 years old, another one was something or other, and <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not into construction, I don't know about heavy equipment like that, but you can't compare a heavy piece of equipment to, for instance, uh, my car at home because it's built completely different, heavy, heavy duty. So, you know, when you say something, if I say, well, I have a car that's 30 years old, you know, it's, it's, it would be an antique. Right. But a truck that's 30 years old, if it's not all rusted out or something, it's still, as long as you keep maintaining it, it's going to give you some performance. And, and, and that's true. In, in our replacement schedule, we don't replace loaders or the large trucks on the same interval as we try to, God forbid, pick up trucks, you oh. know. <laughs> Take that. Uh, uh, but seriously, or, or, you know, cars or whatever, you know, we do take that into account. Right. But the other part of that <coughs> is that um, a lot of this equipment is our frontline equipment for emergencies, and it's not just snow plowing. It can be, it's not that unusual for us to um, need a, uh, I'll put a, take a loader out to just get a tree out of the, the road. Just like two weeks ago or three weeks ago, we had a Seabrook drill, and one of the items that we had to deal with was a tree that had come down in an intersection, and we played it out. Couldn't get any, um, you know, tow truck or anything in there, so we were able to just dispatch a loader to go push the tree out to open up the evacuation route. Now, that's a, a scenario, but, I mean, that could happen oh, yeah. uh, under the circumstances. So we need to be able to rely on this equipment as emergency equipment. It's every bit as important, I feel, as a fire truck or, you know, ambulance or whatever. It all works together, and it's just we need good equipment. Absolutely, Keith. Thank you very much. You do a great job. Thank you. Jim? Jim. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I want to be sure I asked about the gristmill in the right place. Is this the right place yet? No. No. 
Okay. <coughs> I just got a couple of observations and, and would invite you to comment. Um, last year's Warren article uh, for the budget failed, thus we had a default budget uh, for our operating budget this year. <coughs> and in our budget books from last year, the default budget for this account, 4311, totaled one, two, seven, nine, five, six, eight. Yet when you go on to the town website and look up the actual default budget, which is required to be posted with the warrant, it reads one, three, one, nine, five, six, eight, which is exactly difference of $40,000 up. When I compare each of these line items under 4311, I see we had a wage increase, which totaled $20,581, which rightfully would have gone into the default. I also see that we had a career incentive, uh, which was not budgeted in 2013. It was budgeted to zero, yet it magically appeared in the default at 1000 so when you add those two together um, and then subtract the increase of 40000 you've got a net increase that I cannot find of $18,419 that somehow got put into our operating budget, which was supposed to be reflective of a default budget. <clears throat> Would you care to comment? I'd have to defer any conversations about the development of the um, default budget to either Jamie or, or to uh, Christy as far as that goes. But what I will say is, and I, I, I did the numbers there just to give you a, a flavor. We compared the operating budget for 2011 to 2000, what we're proposed was 2015. We're 20% less the budget that we're looking at for 2015 to 2011. And I just defer the conversation about the. Uh, Christy, can you answer the question on how they come up with those numbers for the default? I didn't come up with the default, and I um, don't have the budget and warrant that you're looking at in front of me, so I'd have to look at it and see. I get to take the $1,000 for career incentives. My guess on that is that it was a career incentive that was put into a union contract. That's it is contractual. Yeah. Is that your question about the career and why the thousand dollars? It's more to, the, to go to the default budget number, right? No, there are there are, discre there are basically discrepancies between what this budget committee was presented in the default budget compared to the actual warrant article or the, the default uh, budget that was put into the warrant, and that difference is forty thousand dollars. Now, I noticed that because it just happened to be the exact same number for the EPA mandate. And I thought, gee, that's kind of curious. So I did some drilling down on that, and I can see that it's not directly related to that, not directly related to that. But still, there are discrepancy remains. So I can explain the, uh, I can explain $20,581 because that was a wage increase. Presumably, that was legitimate to go into the default budget. If the career incentive was also a union or contractual based thing, then that was proper for it to go into the default budget as well. Okay. However, it still leaves a discrepancy of $18,419 between what this budget committee was presented in its budget book last year for a default budget compared to what was actually put into the warrant, which I am looking up presently on the uh, town uh, website. Um, so I'm just like uh, curious. How could that be? Christy will have to answer that. Well, I thought maybe you had some insight on it. And you did offer me some insight with regard to the career incentive. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks. And I'll uh, point out that you know uh, the confusion on the uh, EPA mandate, which was an exciting co topic last year, as you may recall. Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of got confused because just after the election. Uh, Mary Louise Wolsey Sleckman uh, inquired about whether or not they should be readjusting the budget to reflect the default, you know, in terms of the line items. 
and everyone said, no, 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 and she asked about the EPA mandate, and, and the town manager, Fred Wells, said, well, no, well, that's been reserved, all $40,000. So that statement led many to believe, including myself, that reserved meant it was somewhere in the default budget, because I don't know how else you can reserve it. But, in fact, I can't find it anywhere in the actual warrant of the default budget, just so you know that. So the reason why there's confusion is because there's a lot of conflicting statements coming from both the print and the warrant and officials. So I just want to clarify that. It still remains something of a mystery. And so if you want to comment, that's fine. Otherwise, I have nothing to further I can't on comment topic. on the okay. town manager's comment, um, to be honest with you. I'm not, again... I'm not trying to be evasive, but I, I really I am not that. involved with how the fall budget is structured and whatever. I put together what we need to spend. You know, the, the, my directive was come up with a proposed budget that you feel is necessary to run the town. To run no, the I can only budget. ask. I can only ask you what you know, and you did yeah. clear up the career incentive thing, which was, okay. you know, one little <laughs> tick going further down the road of righteousness, and that's good. That's good. Okay. <laughs> thank you. We're good. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> In the hope of speeding up this process, I have no questions. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> well, I guess I'm going to slow it down a bit then. Uh, Keith, on page 82, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, 92, on uh, the adjustment for regular wages, I see that the, the position of laborer and light equipment operator has been crossed out. Correct. Which means that... Uh, that has been eliminated, right? By the town manager, yes. Right. But you know, we have seen some of the drafts of warrant articles. Is there going to be a warrant article for those two positions? No. There is not. All right. I'm just going to cross that. But to my understanding, yeah, not that we're preparing. Based conversation with you, with the acting town manager, that those are not going to be. No warrant article on those two positions. That's my understanding. All right. So, all right. <laughs> Which brings me to. Page, go to page 96. And the new equipment, sidewalk sweeper attachment. Mm. Didn't we buy an attachment for that sweeper last year? No, it was in the budget for last year. It was in the budget. Yep. And it did get approved. But was now, it there? In a, did now, it include this no, attachment? We back to the uh, default budget. Default. Right. So we weren't able to buy it. Oh, all right. I, I, again, I just wanted to no, clarify it, that. It was right? approved in this committee. I guess the questions we have as we go along, we know there's reorganization and all money sinks to the bottom line right. when we have a default year. Everything that we voted for last year, look at it as going to a bottom line, not necessarily <coughs> having been purchased because there was no money, no new money to right. do that. However, that being said, we are unaware, sitting here, how things were maneuvered through the year. And if you needed that sweeper, I'm sure that money would have come out of some other line to be able to do it. So pardon some of our questions, Keith, as we go along, but on the day-to-day -day basis, we lose track of what fell victim to a default budget or what was reorganized in a default budget and ultimately paid for and purchased. Well, that's it. You know, I, we can under, I think we understand your frustration of trying to maintain that bottom line. And at times, yes, it's necessary for you to move things to cover the expenses of what comes up, the plowing and so on. <coughs> but again, it, it's kind of uh, not frustrating, but, you know, when we sit here and we review these budgets, we look at a particular line item and say, gee, you know, this looks pretty good. And then you find out by the end of the year, it's gone. <laughs> uh, so uh, again, I, I just brought, I'm just bringing that up. Well, so, if I may, you know, since I've been here, <clears throat> I've been under the direction that you can't go over the budget right. at the end I of the agree. year. I okay? agree. And I think last year was the first year I went over by like three thousand dollars, and out of a five million dollar budget, I don't think that was too bad in three years, taking into account. But I plan ahead, and that's again why. I'm trying to, as much as I'd like to do work on these other things, I'm withholding mm -hmm. money so that I make sure that we don't go into the red. But like Arlene says, you know, as things go along through the year, we're not cognizant of all of these, oh, yeah, no, all these ma maneuvers that happen. And I'm, I'm good that, with that. That's why yeah. we ask these questions. Sure, right? absolutely. <clears throat> now, uh, your assistant came, brought up a point about this on the major, major repairs for vehicle maintenance. 
and he quoted something like over eight thousand dollars for major equipment repairs on some of the uh, vehicles. And again, uh, I know we're not discussing the uh, the justification for warrant articles or whatever, but in the drafts that I've seen for warrant articles, that there is a proposal for some vehicles, yeah. and it does say a three-quarter ton pickup. Mm. And we said we're not going to go into the No, I, I know. We're not going to get into the, 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 good, oh. the, the good or the bad, but is... Well, at some point in time. Okay. But I think he's associating the issue of the pickups with what was brought up before about the concern with the pickup. Right. In my mind, from, from my standpoint, a three-quarter ton pickup for this pur purpose is not in the same category as a three-quarter ton pickup that you're talking I mean, a, a half a ton pickup, which you're talking about. So I didn't mean to mislead you, but in, in my mind, I, I view the two as totally separate. One's coming. I wouldn't take a half ton pickup as a worn article, whereas a three-quarter ton truck is significantly more cost. Has a whole different, you know, um, use much but more. I, you know, I, use. What I'm looking at is uh, hopefully if you get some, if the warrant article passes and you get some of this equipment, that we'll see major repairs drop. Or and that's the hope eventually, especially with the having the extra mechanic, <laughs> full-time mechanic, right. and the mechanics help. It. That's what we're trying to do. But it, there's a lag period, and it's going to take some time to get caught up. All right, that's, that's all Just I clarify what, yeah, that, what that unit is. Right. That unit is specifically Unit 24. That's also the same unit that we had the transmission go on earlier the this major, summer. One right. of the major, yeah. So we repla it, it happens to be Bobby Walker's truck. It's used many days of the year. Uh, uh, there an, it's used to, um, we do all the sewer and drain locations for it, all, all those dig safe calls that we get. Mm -hmm. That's the truck that responds to all those. Bobby's assigned certain routes um, because that's his truck, and, and one of those routes is Beach Plum Way when it comes down to snow plowing because he gets in there. It's a heavy enough truck to handle the street, but not so much that he get, ends up doing any damage with it because Bobby slices bread with that truck, to be honest with it, when it comes to snow plowing. So that's the right piece of equipment for the right guy for the right usage. So maybe we will not see some of this heavy uh, right. major repair So you expense. wouldn't see another 3,000. Right. We didn't know whether, we don't. We still don't know whether we're, we're going to have to live with 24 for a whole year or or repair it. So the decision was made, right. repair the truck, repair it because it's that critical. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just one question. In yep. fact, um, I'd almost forgotten it. Dig say, are you reimbursed? By the homeowners? Oh, oh no. So it's a unfunded mandate well, in your department. It is and it isn't. It's, um, to be honest with you, we think it saves us some money hmm. because no we find that, that um, people replacing a sewer mm -hmm. didn't realize that um, that required a, per a permit. They, they're going, we like the fact they're going from clay to plastic, but it still requires mm -hmm. a permit. Uh, they didn't come down to get one, but we, oops, there it appears on dig safe. Or, um, hey, I'm ripping out my driveway and I'm making it five feet wider, and oh, I'm making it looped. Oops, got dig safe involved, but didn't elect. So, in those, from that perspective, it's saving us a lot of heartache, uh, preventing things getting broken or disturbed that we then have to <coughs> handle in an emergency situation. Okay. So we like it in, from that perspective. Um, and, and, and it didn't, when it comes to the emergency water call-outs and unitil call-outs in the middle of the night, we were always getting those calls anyhow. Sure. They were just calling the house directly. So, you know, they were calling either Toby or Frank directly, getting them out of bed. So it, it, it didn't really change it. Good job. Thank you. Uh, most most of this um, I get um, seven years without a contract is certainly um, entitled to bump that up whenever it, it happens to come here at night for zero three uh, replacement of equipment. Um, one of the questions I had, though, if you can educate me a little bit, snow removal. Um, and I know this gets a little convoluted in the thing, but the snow removal on the sidewalks on Ocean Boulevard. What's what's with that? We don't do any snow removal on Ocean Boulevard, whether it's the sidewalks or the roads. 
We are doing Ashworth Ave, the um, westerly side of Ashworth Ave, <coughs> that's Town Road. And we've got priorities set up where, like, the first priority is um, uh, the sidewalks to the schools that the kids walk on, and then the second priority is, like, the, um, you know, downtown area and, and the... Um, the major roads, and then the third priority is to do Ashworth now because we've had complaints with the parents down there that the kids can't walk to the, you know, to the, the school bus. So, so there's nothing down on Ocean Boulevard, and what about Church Street? From the um, no, there's nothing done on Church Street. That's done by the state. Well, it's not done at all. But no, I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm sorry. We do, we do do church. Not the not sidewalks. The, not the sidewalks. No, no, not no. the sidewalks. The, the, the street. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and that's what I'm asking about. Right. As a public safety component um, <coughs> to, to snow removal, is there anything? We can barely get to the main arterial mm -hmm. road on Ash Ashworth Ave. We have um, just three sidewalk plows, two on our main roads, and. Uh, so uh, we just don't have the resources to do all the sidewalks. In fact, I put in a request to the planning board not to approve any new sidewalks for any developments unless it's on private property where the homeowners are responsible to take care of their own sidewalks because we just don't have the manpower and the equipment to do all the sidewalks <coughs> in town. Are there any sidewalks that are being done? In town? Other than the yeah. Ashworth, yeah. Yeah. In town, all yeah. over town. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Yeah, but yeah. that's why I'm wondering where's the where's the cutoff on the reasoning on like why why we do some but we don't do church. And I understand the state school. laws. Right. Yeah. We we, all, we do all the any yeah. where any of the kids walk to school. We do those. That's a priority. Mm -hmm. We do the downtown mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. and then we do certain arterial roads that have been historically done over a period of time. I learned early on in my career, it's very easy to give a service. It's very difficult to take mm -hmm. it away. <laughs> so if you've been doing something for a period of time, you keep doing it if you want to keep your job. And if not, <laughs> so, um, so, but we did add Ashworth Ave mm -hmm. because, like I said, we were getting some water complaints from school parents kids, about yeah. their kids mm -hmm. being able to get to the uh, school bus. You do want to call a roadside walk. Okay. Tommy? I just want to interject. We're bleeding over into snow removal. Mm -hmm. All right, we're yep. still yes. on administration, yep. mm -hmm. and I let it go because it just seemed to flow that way. But I hope the next section is going to go really quickly. Um, I'd like to end the snow removal so we can end this section, if that's okay with you, Jim. Go ahead. I'm moving on. Do you have any questions on the no, administration? No. Okay, thank you. And David, do you have any I, questions I on administration? Um, I know there's a point where to repair a vehicle reaches a point where it's really more cost-effective to replace it and repair it. I'm just wondering what procedures we use to look at that. How, how do we decide when a vehicle has reached a point where it is more cost-effective to replace it than to maintain it? It's, do you have an organized way of keeping track of that? We do. In our long-term equipment replacement schedule, we have a rating that's completed by uh, our mechanics and um, their supervisor, or not the supervisor of the vehicle, but whatever the supervisor is of managing that piece of equipment and our maintenance manager. They'll do it, they'll evaluate the vehicle, and we have a 1 to 10 rating, and we can show that to you where we have a complete inventory. So then we take that, we match it up with the age. But the other part of that formula is that, that and this is where I come in, is we try to balance out the overall budget so that we don't have any dramatic spikes. So if you just take the rating and the age and whatever, you may have for two years, you may have two or three hundred thousand dollars worth of replacement. But then because of the rating, because of the condition, all of a sudden you have a real big spike of six or seven hundred thousand dollars. So I'll go in and I'll start balancing those out and I'll talk with, you know, with input from my mechanics about we may be um, looking to replace an equipment a little bit earlier to try to offset those dramatic peaks in, in cost. So it's a balancing act. But it's not just based on any one thing. It's a number of factors. And again, we look at the condition of it, the age of it, the <coughs> use of it. You know, if it's a heavy-use vehicle, we, uh, we tend to pay more attention to that. 
The other thing that we do that works good is we trickle down equipment so that, for instance, uh, if we buy a new loader, the highway department will get that and then they'll use it for, say, five to ten years, or sewer and drains will use it for five to ten years, and then they all end up at the transfer station. So that, because that's not as a heavier use and it's not as dependent on. So any, you know, the um, transfer station manager doesn't like it, but all of his equipment is hand-me-downs because we're trying to get the most use out of our, our equipment. Thank you. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Repeat the amount for me, Jim. Oops. Right. So let the gas run until this is all over. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a follow up question? 1,506,153. What page was that on? 95. 95. <clears throat> Sorry. You want to ask him now? <laughs> no more now. 1 million. Five hundred six thousand one hundred fifty-three. Two Steves and all go on. Yep, that's it. There was there was an additional question. Was there? I'm sorry, I didn't look that way. I just want you to get the number. All right, again. Uh, uh, real What's, quick, real yeah. quick, please. Um, on the new new equipment, back on page ninety-five. Okay, I know that we talked about last year getting that sweeper. It didn't get through, so it's on there this year for six thousand dollars. However, under actual for 2014, there was $13,000 spent. So what did you buy that you hadn't, you know, somehow didn't get? Um, what, what page is that now? On 95. 90, 95, Keith. It's under yeah, uh, it's, it's account 740, no equipment. There was, of course, because of the Fourth default budget, down. there was nothing placed in that account, yet there was actually year-to-date $13,000 spent. Do you, do you know what that ball? is, that particular thing? Steve, you should have asked that question in writing. <laughs> I'm prepared. thinking. I, I'm, you know, it's just, I don't <coughs> spotted it, though, Jerry. That's the only I thing. That's some sort of sidewalk plow? No. 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 It's Couldn't. plenty encumbered from 2013. Okay. What's that? It was encumbered from 2013. Yeah. Carry forward. Okay, thank you. That answers the question. No, thank you. Answer. Answer. You know what it is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> There's the answer. We did, uh, yeah, that's the answer to that. I okay, thank you. What's the answer? It's been encumbered from oh, 2013. Oh, right. 13. The, uh, we don't e know what it was. The EPA mandate, uh, which we anticipated last year, that didn't occur this year. <laughs> uh, are we anticipating it next year, or is it a fact now? It's, we're anticipating it, but from what I understand, they have approved the permit from Massachusetts, and so we're so right in line to get it. Pardon me? It's still not a fact. It's not a fact. Not a fact. I have one little over. Okay. You know, we're going to be here till then. Just, this is another really quick one. Have you prepared anything for the CIP committee as far as these vehicles go? Yes. It's right in our book, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Right, but <laughs> yes. we hadn't seen it yet. Okay. I, but I submitted it. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. All those in favor? All those opposed? So, um, well, pay keep your hands up. Keep them up. Oh, I'm sorry. They're going to come. <clears throat> hey, Joe, does Rose get paved? No. Mm. <laughs> all right, and that's, extensions? That's Dave. He lives on one of them. No extensions. Okay, no <laughs> extensions. Yep. Okay, let's go on to the next section. 830. I know, but hey, I want to get one more <laughs> section done, otherwise you guys are going to be 4312. We're going to be here anyway. Maybe okay. the fact that you want to break Okay, uh, 4312. Page 97. Thank you, Mark. I'll, I'll move 201-900. I'll second that. Uh -huh. wait, wait, wait. 
Page 97. Yeah, I know. The total for the section but is about 899. Let's go further. Total total 4930. Let's go further. 4930. 440,930. Yeah. Second that. Tim, Tim seconded it. Well, I was yeah. seconding the other page, but I can second yeah. that. Just, right. just as well. Now, we'll let you lead out. Not a commitment. Okay. Um, so the first question, A, is... Hired equipment summer, please okay. explain the jump. That's the result of um, hiring a contractor to do uh, beach raking at Sun Valley. Right. <clears throat> and that was how much of the 15? It's, a, I believe it was $12,000. that about what we've historically spent on beach raking at Sun Valley? No. Higher or lower? Higher. Higher. We used to um, tap on to the state of New Hampshire's um, contract for that service. Yeah. And we're no longer able to do that, so now we have to do it on our own. Did it go off a bit? Um, no. I was very fortunate to find one contractor in the, st in the whole uh, region of New England to find that would be willing to do it for that amount. There is no bit. There was no... Not a lot of guys doing this. Kind no. Of so in fact, he had to buy a specific piece of equipment to do that. So how do you know you're getting good price if nobody bid? It was the only price. How? Oh. If you didn't put it out the bid, how do you? Because <laughs> I, I contacted a number of increase. places to find out if the, I contacted the manufacturer of the, the, um, the rakes. beach rakes and asked them who they sell them to. I went online, I Googled in, who you know, the companies that do that. There's only one company that sells them in this region. And I called him up and he said that nobody's doing it in this area for a contractor, but he said... You might want to call this guy here and check with him. And Who I does did. the Rye Beaches or, or Northampton Beaches or Portsmouth Beach or Those whatever? Are state beaches. So state. they're all state, state. I don't believe the town does any. Hey. No, I, oh, you mean the individual towns? The individual towns. <clears throat> no further comments on that. Thank you. Uh, or on that page from for All right. Sidewalks and curbs. Um, We're still on this page. Maybe you want to ask Eileen yeah. if there's anybody got any questions on this page. No, he, Keith so is still we going to go through, through it. Now we're going to the next but page. What's happened is we've already covered some of these things, so we can go quickly. I, I would like to stay on that subject if you want to do that. I would rather go through the questions okay. with Keith, have him add anything to it in his presentation, and then have all of you ask your questions instead of breaking it up. Because the other way... Go to <laughs> So sidewalks... Presiding and officer. Right? <laughs> Sidewalks and curbs, zero th through September 2014. As I explained earlier, that's one of those um, expenses that uh, I'm withholding because of the overall state of the budget at this point in time. So there is still a possibility that <coughs> we do not get hit with any snow that we may see. Yes, and what I'll do is, what, what I've done with Mike like Schwartzer in the past <laughs> is, I get POs ready to go, like right after right. Christmas, and then assuming that... Um, before the first of the year. Before the first of the year. Mm -hmm. The problem with this specific account, what I really want to do, what I've been hoping to do, is to do uh, sealing of all the concrete sidewalks around town. And we put that out to bid to see what response. We didn't get any contractors, and we did a lot of advertising to do that work. So I'm even thinking about um, having our guys come in and do it on the weekends mm -hmm. and do it on overtime to, to get it done. But it would come out of that $26,000. Otherwise, we're going to lose years in our sidewalks. Absolutely. The you have the next sidewalk. five or ten sidewalks identified as to which one? Yeah. You want. Well, the, the Hampton Beach is the one I want to do, you know, as a priority because those are the, the, those are the, uh, the ones that were just built recently. And you try to get them done as soon as possible after the initial construction of them. Hampton Beach. Side streets. Side street. Yeah, yeah. Side streets. Yeah. Side streets. <coughs> okay. Highland Ave. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> hired equipment winter, see an increase. That's just what I was saying. We have two new routes by private contractors. Does the salt shed carry only the salt, or is some form of mixing with sand occur? Uh, the shed <coughs> itself only carries salt, but we do do mixing outside of the shed, but we don't contaminate the inside with sand. shed contains just salt. Right, and we typically go with an 80 20% mixture, 80% sand and um, 20% uh, salt. 
Uh, do you have a suggestion or a plan to reduce streetlight costs? That's another thing that I've talked about before. I think there is an opportunity to um, save a con considerable amount of money with streetlights, but that would be involving a political decision to start removing streetlights around town. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big rider at 200,000 plus. And I don't know, maybe go to Argon or... LEDs. You know, LEDs. The problem with that, Jerry, I've been through this before. They have a 20-year um, lifespan for what their cost is. So if you ask them to change, say the light is 15 years old, and you ask them to go to, say, high-pressure sodium or some of this new technology, LEDs. you have to play, pay the undepreciated value of that light from, from the year 15 to 20. So it's not a real true savings. It's very complicated. I've looked at this. I've been through this before. The only real way to do it isn't to just switch from one technology to another. Is the actual reduction in streetlights, and that is a political issue. It's a safety issue. Safety. Plain and simple. Uh, I wonder what the other towns are. I've known a number of towns that have gotten grants to upgrade their street lighting. Have you looked into those? Yes. There, um, Durham's some, done that. My I, I, good friend is the public works director in Durham. Mm -hmm. And they looked at, they did that very thing and there is there has been so. some money in the past. I'm not aware of any uh, program right now to do that. That was a um, public service company in New Hampshire program. Uh, I've talked to Unitil about that that handles our street lights. In fact I was talking to them today. Uh, there's no incentive program to do that from Unitil at this stage. How could there be no incentive for that? Being an electrical contractor, we have a huge incentive to install LED lighting in any new construction. And they write it up. You got a huge savings on that. How can there not be that for street lighting? I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I've looked into it. I had a contractor from Hampton Falls call me up and say, Oh, we've got a plan. We can save the town hundreds of thousands of dollars on street lighting costs. And I said, I'll come down, meet with you. I went down and I said, Can you guarantee these savings? No, we can't. I called Unitil. I said, Is this company legit? They says we can't comment on that, but be wary of, of the situation, what you're getting yourself into. So um, I've, I've, if, 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 you can, if you know of a program, please let me know. Email me, yes. and, and I'll follow up I on it. Yeah. With you the town hall so please let me know, and I'll be more than happy to, to look into like it. Like I said, being an electrical contractor town, we, we get huge rebates. I know you can. Rebates. Just I know you can for certain And that's for commercial, residential. Right. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We got for the Church Street Pump Station, we got a huge um, yeah. subsidy for that because mm -hmm. of the energy saving conservation. We're looking out for these things. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you is that I contacted Unitil okay. to ask them specific for municipal lighting, not for private or pumps or whatever. And the answer is there is nothing in place right now. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll ask them. It's a big nut, though. Moving on. Uh, storm drainage maintenance goes back to just withholding that work at the time being. We're still doing work. We placed the um, covers on. What was that? Who's that? QSAC Road. Thank you. QSAC Road. Um, but again, that's one of those accounts that is non essential that we've been holding off just because of the overall state of the budget. Green maintenance. That does it for that section. Actually, that that uh, lighting question is a different section. Mm -hmm. It's the next section. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then we won't have to ask it in that No, you won't. We get an answer. Okay, going back to the beginning here, and Jerry, I hate to skip over you, but <laughs> no, it's okay. I think you've been taken care of. Okay, Joe, yeah. are you good? Is there? Uh, no, I got a few. Is there okay. any? Any, I mean, we've been in the default budget a few years now. Is there anything that's going to be done with Fairfield, Ruth, and Belmont? I mean, that's been oh, sitting there. Really, well, years. as it stands right now, there is a um, Warren article proposed for that, mm -hmm. taking the money from our highway block grant <coughs> we get from the gasoline tax revenue to apply okay. that to do that road. So it's going to be presented to the selectmen Monday night for their consideration to support that article. Okay. And hired equipment, summer help. It says rental of equipment not available. We don't have this equipment in our stock that... Why are we spending, you're saying 12, 12K for Sunnyvale, but we don't have 
Why are we renting equipment? I don't understand that. That's what I was just talking about. That's where that um, BTA can come right. back. So that's, that's 12, but you're asking 15. So where's the other three? There's, there's times that we would need a low bed to haul uh, a loader to a um, repair facility. I, I okay. Right. Or yep. even a, a, a tow truck if we need a tow truck or something like that. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> the sidewalk repairs. North side of town, Route 1, those sidewalks have been done and they're falling apart. I mean, I hear you want to seal, you know, the beach, and it seems like everything's driven to the beach. We want to take care of the beach, but the rest side of town, you walk them, you can't. You know, the reason I want to, the only reason that I've identified the beach for, for, for that work is that um, if you don't seal a concrete I, I understand, site within I understand a certain the period of time, Correct. it's going to start scaling. So are you asking the planning board to no more concrete sidewalks, stay to a hot top instead? We won't approve any concrete sidewalks. I won't. In fact, that was an issue with the selectmen, and I convinced them they thought that would, concrete <coughs> sidewalks are great. That um, place down They're at the great, end of, but um, when it kind of hurt, they wanted to put a concrete, that new Rush. condo, they yeah, wanted to right. put a, con a concrete to de require the asphalt. Okay. You know when that's the best thing to do. Okay, I'm all set. Okay. I was at a meeting last Saturday in Peterborough where the town of Hollis said they received the grant to do an upgrade on their street lights. I'll pull up the, the website and get send it to you. Sure, I'd be. If yeah. anybody has any information, I'll definitely will follow up on it. I yeah, appreciate thing, that city information. Of mm -hmm. Got some grant money for it as yep. well. Mm. That um, I have a couple of things. Um, my first question is uh, on page ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. Yes. Tree maintenance, including cemeteries. This last year. Mm. I know, and I thought we were going to put this back into cemeteries for whatever it is they spent. Mm. Is this the trees that are coming down, the pine trees that are coming down? They have their, it's in their budget too. Right. In the cemetery's budget. That was, raised that was last a request year. from the town manager to put that money in there. Um, I do know that they're looking at, uh, the town manager has proposed one article to. Um, take down the pine trees at the Pine Grove Cemetery. Um, but I have had to this situation, especially with Pine Grove, where the residents right next door has been nervous about the trees falling onto their house. So just out of default and safety, we had to use our resource, financial resources to go in there because the cemetery said they didn't have any money for that purpose at the time. So um, this is more of a town manager directive to me to put money in there to be able to maintain the cemeteries. I don't under totally understand that logic, but that's... Um, are you insured to do this in the cemeteries? The contractor is We, we hire a contractor. We don't do it ourselves. So you hire it out as yeah, being yeah. a contractor? Right. Yeah. We um, do We do three-year bids for tree removal. The last two bids have been won by Urban Tree Service, and that's who we contract with. We have some okay. set prices for certain things, other things we have to get an individual <laughs> estimate for. All right, yeah, because that's one question I've had is uh, people have talked about the fact that somebody could drop a tree on. No, I'm talking right. about the no. graves no. going. We, our, our guys with our chainsaws really just try, we try and stick with the ones that are already in the road, falling in the road, I should say, emergency ones. There you go. Um, <coughs> my next one is um, again on page, well, I'm going off in 98, and highways and maintenance. Resurface patch and crack ceiling. Is this a, something we are we have a plan for, or is this like as we go along? We the, the plan that we have, and you might have seen them around town. We're trying to catch up on it right now. Where mm -hmm. our highway general foreman will go out and identify <coughs> deficient portions of roadways, and then he'll mark them out and focus on the main arterial roads, and we'll grind them down an inch. And then we'll have a follow-up crew come in, and they'll put an inch of new pavement on there. So 
the plan is based on the use of the road, the arterial road is what we're focusing on now. There's no tree service on the cemetery budget oh. this year. Not this year. It was last year. So, I mean, it's... Anything else, Brian? And my last one is, um, I'm going to follow up on some what someone brought up earlier. Um, the road painting, the contracts, are these put out to bid? Yes. Every three years. Every three years? And that's all I have. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Got a few. I'm just going to fire through them. Um, <coughs> excuse me. On the, on the tree um, removal, I, I realize that there are times <coughs> they come down. I don't like seeing them in two places in the budget. Mm. They're not. They're not. They're, they're, not, not, they're not in cemeteries, only. Is nothing in cemeteries? No. Right. Okay. Which it was last year. But it's being contracted from both ends. <coughs> I mean, it's being contracted out. We're not actually doing it. Correct. So I guess I'd wonder why it wouldn't be under the cemeteries to take care of their trees, and it gets confusing. Yeah. Okay. As long just as it's not in both wide, places. Though. I'm sorry? Yeah. Town wide, not just cemeteries. Town wide, oh, including think, cemeteries. Yeah, it is town wide, including cemeteries. So it's oh. like, so we'll look to see none of that coming out of cemeteries. Out of any line, right? It's one stop shopping. Like it we, is, it is. Yeah. All right. Much like we took that. legal out of our budget, it comes out of the legal budget should right. we need legal. Sure. It's all coming out of you. All right. Um, there's a couple of things here that really disturb me, um, Keith, that have nothing to do with you and probably um, in a mindset bother you as much as it bothers me. Every year we sit here and we budget for certain amounts only to not even touch those amounts or do that work intended. And this year I have listened to a lot of complaints about our sidewalks, about our roads, and we continue to build money in that never has a prayer of getting spent because it's held back till the end of the year. <coughs> I come from, my father was DPW, you know that, you all know that. I understand how difficult this is because we can't predict Mother Nature. And it makes it tough. <coughs> but when we roll year after year after year, doing the same things to the same items. We built very expensive sidewalks down the beach. They're relatively new, but they're gonna fall apart if we don't find a way to seal them. And every year I, I say, I'll give you the money there, but please, let me see something done on them. And every year it, it, it falls victim. So I'm almost to the point of saying, let them go as far as they can. There's no sense in funding that. You're never going to see it. Please don't get to that point, uh, really, because that wouldn't be a wise uh, investment on the part of the town. Someone made a decision to go with concrete sidewalks years ago, well before my time. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have made that same decision because I don't, I, I, I don't believe in sidewalk, concrete sidewalks in New England when you have the salt. The salting is what's going to deteriorate the, the sidewalks. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't maintain them properly because once that skit, once that top film off that sidewalk is deteriorates, and then it starts scaling, the um, deterioration is going to accelerate over time, and then it's going to become a, a tripping hazard on the side roads, and then it's a liability to the town. I really want to do it. Like I said, we put it out to bid, hopefully to get a, a bid to do it, and, and no one bids. So. <coughs> I've come up with a game plan to do it next year, and I mean, yeah. do we have to send all of this out? To, I'm hearing bid a lot. Do we have to send all of this out to bid because we're short on manpower? We are very short on manpower. It's not unusual throughout this year that we've had two people on the highway crew between absences and everybody on uh, sorry, trash and recycling pickup. We and Frank Swift were tell you we've had lucky to have two people I mean when I go down a road and I, I can pick anyone out right now and I see the washouts on the shoulders and you go by a couple of months later and now those washouts the pavement that's starting to break up and a lot of these areas that weren't maintained as the plows go by are going to make a supreme mess out of them as they go along where were the road crews to 
put the fill in, and I don't, uh, maybe I'm not using the right words, yes. to rebuild. Usually it's, it's a road crew that right. goes out and fills those cavities. And it doesn't keep roads totally from deteriorating, but it does stop some of what I'm projecting out there. I don't see that going on. I put in the budget, my proposed budget included two people for the highway crew <coughs> to help get caught up on our infrastructure needs in this town. And it was, you know, rejected from the, the budget that I did not get the support on that. And I understand the way things are with the default budget, so I'm not whining. Uh, We're not, but, but, but <laughs> not to interrupt you, this committee is not here to make a default budget. We're here to make a budget to hear what we need to cure some of these things. Every time we say we're going to put it out to bid, when you put things out to bid, a contractor pays his people and then he makes a profit on top of that. So I'm not a keen of, you know, proponent of putting everything out to bid. When we're talking about EPW road crews, a, a town this size, a department this big, and we don't have two people to go out and fill the cavities. That's what I'm talking about. We do. Until we get we to have, November? Yeah, well, we do, but we have 77 miles of road. Then I would say the two people is not enough. Right. That's exactly why I proposed, if you look in there, I proposed two additional people, not a crew of five or seven or whatever, to try to give us the manpower to get caught up on some of this work that desperately needs to be done around town. And did you have a price tag on those two individuals? Yes, it's in there. So I don't have it off the top of my head, but it was in the original budget request. That I don't mean the labor cost. It would, it would Forty-six thousand yeah. dollars. But that was forty-six thousand dollars. But right. that was just for about um, seven months, and that did not include the benefits, which would have come out of Christie's budget. Now, they're not going to be used for um, trash detail, are they? At all? <laughs> they, no, I'm, I'm no, not no. being. That's where they were the only time <laughs> they would be used is if they were covering for someone that's that's out absent or something like that. That I. I it's not the answer I would hope for. Okay, I' looking for dedicated people for road work in this town. No, no. Well, let me. A let after me. the seafood festival, we went from you know when the, when the this, this saw waste collection routes shifted, we went from two people a normal day to having five. That's when we. St that's when you saw all of a sudden where this milling machine come from. All this white paint appeared around town magically. The leprechaun of Frank Swift and. <laughs> Chris Jacobs went around and painted all this stuff. Then you saw a ton of milling, mm -hmm. and then right behind that, and it was a, I won't say it was a game, but we knew we were on a deadline until the weather turned. And now you see miraculously in the last two weeks, or last week, as the weather's turned, nothing. Now if we get a three or four break, day break and it goes to above 55, we'll probably go back and mill more. Uh, we're having to mill and patch because we don't have paving money. And we're, we're only milling and patching because it, after September. Um, you know, you, you mentioned the roadside grader. I've, the I've got that box that will hang on the back end of the truck where I can dish off grading material to put in shoulders. We haven't used it in three years. I have a, side, I have a, pa I have a paint machine for paint and crosswalks. I don't have the labor to paint crosswalks. Okay, so I haven't used that particular machine. I pray that someday I'll have the labor. That's why it didn't appear in the auction. So we have some equipment, but we don't have the labor. I mean, if I were you, I would be coming in here singing to us, this is what you need. I mean, I, I watch the lines being but painted. We're but we're trying, to, we're trying to work with everybody. We're trying to work with the Board of Selectmen and all 16 members of the Budget Committee and, and taxpayers. Um, we realize it's a balancing act. So we're here to inform, mm -hmm. but... There has to be, um, we'll inform, but I guess there has to be a groundswell of people that, that want to do this, you know, from, from, all, all, from every group. Eileen, all's I can do, all's we can do is propose it, and I did propose it. It's not, I proposed the manpower. That's all I can do. <coughs> I, don't, I don't know what else I can do at this I'm point. Not, you, I'm not, you see it there. I'm you coming out there. strongly, and I apologize. This is not a negative attack on no, what we, don't, we have don't to work I'm not taking it What that. I'm saying is that for the number, I, there's nowhere that I've gone 
that somebody has not said something about the things I've just brought up. Yep. Absolutely. Right. And, and as public things, works director, I hear it all the time. Things that I've seen myself. I've seen the lines being painted down Anne's Lane. All right. And two months later, they're being filled in when the lines have almost faded and it's it's screaming manpower. And yes, the weather does close in. I'm sorry if you wait to address your roads and your streets till you get to, you know, October. It's going to happen more times than not that you're not going to get it done. And our jobs here, we want to give you money to work <coughs> with. We want to give you the money that you need. But at the end of the day, not only us, but the taxpayers want to see that those things were done. Right. And, okay. and let, me, let me just clarify your question to me on those two additional employees. I didn't mean to say that those employees on top of the other employees that are doing trash would be required to do trash, but I can't guarantee if we hire A and B that they're going to someday fill in for, for D and E because they're out for the day. But having an extra two people would add to the overall crew, so we would always have two people extra than what we have now. If you didn't have them, you would have to address the trash situation as it is right now, as you addressed it all year and the year before and the year before. I think woefully we are <coughs> way beyond what needs to be done in roads and drains. So to say, if I considered building back into the budget that amount of money for those two people, I guess I would want some confidence that that's <coughs> where they're going and no more to trash and, and recycling. If we don't put the money in there, you still have the status quo of what you had. Yeah, I, I could so. give you that assurance. Like I said, under the worst case scenario when we've had in the <clears> summer, <throat> when, when I talked about hearing that we only had two people in highway, that was in addition to a full complement of people on solid waste pickup and recycling pickup. Mm -hmm. So if, 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 if we got the extra two people, we would then have four people, which make up a crew. Right now, two people can't do a crew of, of work because you got to have someone watching the other's back and whatever. Two people don't work very well putting a hot top down. Mm -hmm. you got to have a crew of at least three and prefer, preferably four. What would be the fringes on those two people, uh, Christy? Do you know offhand? Well, that would be part-time positions, wouldn't it? No, that no. Would, we would suggest that Full those time. would be health insurance is right around 23 for each for health for each one just for health insurance probably another 15,000 for the extras I would think 35 each all right I'm good on that Michael thank you keep moving um Keith Milling and patching. I know it's not. I've seen you do it on Winnicott Road. I was just congratulating Pete tonight that, you know, it's the next best thing to resurface the whole road. But at least if you mill and patch it and if you covered it with that black stuff that people put on their driveway, <coughs> you'd never know the difference. You'd think it was a new road, more or less. Uh, the one thing I want to make sure that is not misunderstood. On Lafayette Road, there were concrete sidewalks, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And also on High Street. Okay. They're gone. They're gone? <laughs> no, they're still there, but they're gone. Oh. Well, <laughs> no, no, but there was, there was a comment about um, that somebody made about the, it seems like all of it goes to the beach. And since all the side of the, of the bench is <laughs> from the beach, uh, I just want to mention that um, that's, that's not really true, Joe. <laughs> Just want to—I want to stick up for the beach a little bit, okay? So I'm sure if you had the money, you'd you'd put some of that uh, sealer on the on the ones up town as well. No, I wouldn't. It's too late. And, and I'll tell you why. Once it starts scaling, mm -hmm. the the, the sealer is relatively ineffective. Okay. You have to get it while the surface is in good condition that's when you need to do the ceiling once it starts scaling it just absorbs down it just starts chalking and that's okay. the main reason so why I want to do, the to do that uptown yeah. and that's, that's the why. only reason they don't spend the money uptown Joe. so okay. that spend it down at the beach okay thank you very much Mr. Jones
It makes perfect sense that you wouldn't want to seal anything unless you were already, basically, you got virgin concrete. That's when you seal it. I'm not saying it's not when, um, when you've at lost all that, effective. Uh, it's better than nothing to seal even those, but it's not cost effective mm -hmm. to do it because it doesn't hold up. What you end up sealing is a rough surface, which the seal comes off more quickly anyway. Yeah, well, it, it sucks right down into the asphalt, yeah. uh, the, yeah. the, the concrete. The uh, $10,000 increase under 441 on page 97 for those following the book. Page. Page, page 97 for those following Thanks. the book. Suffix is 441. Mm -hmm. A $10,000 increase. Yeah. Um, and from what I understand from your earlier um, statement, uh, by I think Jerry's question, that $10,000 increase is the result of needing to rake the beach. Right. Sun Valley. Sun Valley. Okay. Yeah. Sun Valley. Now, Sun Valley is that which is on the south side of the Hampton River, right? Right. Harbor, mm -hmm. which is really, yeah. most people think of as Seabrook, but it's actually a little yeah. patch there. Yeah. Right. So $10,000 to do that. Previous years. 12000 12, yeah. 12. 12000 Yeah. That line only shows a $10,000 increase. But it's, I, I. You must have saved 2000 somewhere else, I guess. No, no, it was. All I can tell you is it's twelve thousand dollars. I I negotiated the contract for that work. Well, the budget for this year is five thousand, and you're proposing fifteen thousand. That's a ten thousand dollar difference. Yeah. So that's that's the ten thousand that I'm oh, coming up with in my mind. Um, <coughs> yeah, that's the default budget. Do you need more? That's the default. No, no, budget. you're you're right, Tim. <coughs> It's the default budget. No, I know. This yeah, yeah. The, today, this operating budget. Yeah. Yeah. That's a ten thousand dollar increase over this operating right. budget. Mm -hmm. Right. And all of that. I mean, the previous years that raking was not done, or was done by some other cheaper means, or what? We uh, had a deal with the state. The state would have they they would hire a contractor and use their own rakes. Mm -hmm. And so we had a deal, it was like a quid pro thing that they would do it and we would just, we wouldn't have to pay for the rake, we would just pay the contractor's time. But that's right. been eliminated. And uh, do you know what the motivation was for that elimination? Politics. <laughs> Could you elaborate? No. Okay. <laughs> so the state is continuing to contract to rake Seabrook Beach, but as soon as it hits the <coughs> Hampton Seabrook line, it stops now. Is that what Correct. I'm saying? Okay. And before we asked them to continue on for that little bit of space on, on Hampton that's there, we give them a little extra money to do that. And it's kind of <coughs> like being a good neighbor. We're asking them to do that, right? We just we pay them for their cost. On the, up uh, by, um, what's it called? Uh, that little section. White Speed. White Speed. Mm -hmm. What's it called? No, I thought we were talking about uh, the, 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 the spot just over the... Sun Valley. Sun Valley. Sun Valley. Sun Valley. Right. Yeah, yeah, so there is Palm Beach, we think. The state doesn't do... Seabrook. Right. Palm Seabrook. They have Brooke. their Seabrook. own person. Yeah. But the, right. There is a little section um, by Boston Ave, I guess it is, in that area that's owned by the town that the state does okay. as another quid pro thing that we have. With so, them. But this $10,000 increase, just to go back to my original question, this $10,000 increase is about raking the beach. Right. Correct. And the beach we're talking about is? Sun yes. Valley. Sun, Sun Valley, Valley. Yeah. which is that which is located south of the Hampton River. Yes. Okay. And that's just a little space that's town-owned <laughs> Yes. Beach. Okay. And in previous years, the state, when it does its raking of the Seabrook Beach, it doesn't do they don't. They doesn't. No, they don't. Seabrook, no. does, Seabrook does, does their own. Seabrook. Seabrook does its own. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and we approached Seabrook to see if they would do ours, and we would pay them for it, and they right. said absolutely they said no. not. How much is the rake on? Do they have rake? Yes. Did they do it previous years? No. The state, no. state had always done it. state had always done it. Okay. So maybe we need to have a better liaison with the town of Seabrook to be more cooperative. I don't know. Or the state. Or the state. <laughs> I think it makes more sense for Seabrook to do it since they're already there with their rake, you know. But whatever. I mean, that's just a, a thought. Um, that's a good thought, though. It is. Mm -hmm. We tried. We tried that. I see. Uh, well, we should keep trying because it's just a good neighborly yeah. kind of thing. Um, what is Seabrook's reason for not wanting to do it? 
I wasn't involved with those negotiations. The town manager is directly involved with the town manager of Seabrook on that. And Fred I know, tried to do it. Well, he was. I know the answer was no. Fred was the, town, the former town manager of Seabrook. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, and he uh, yeah. didn't get it. I guess he, he should the, know who to talk to. You got the picture. Uh, the gentleman, we're hitting the anyway, now over here. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Just, for the state well, rep, to continue. this Thank is a good one. We don't get our share of meals and rooms tax. Well, that's a separate so, so what I'm saying is, how's, how's okay, about... Okay, we're, we're, we're way off. Let's, Let's get, get back on the questions, okay? We're gonna Storm drainage. You know, I'm really concerned that I'm going to miss my opportunity to speak about the Grist Mill Dam. So if this is the spot, let me know. If not, I'll just uh, move on. There is on. no spot in my budget for the discussion. A, really? That's Isn't a it? It's a Warren article. article. Yeah. It was a past. It was an article. Warren article was passed. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you didn't perform on that one. Right, so when do we get a chance to talk about it's that? not part of his budget, though. Right. Not so at what point in the uh, calendar? So Warren article. I would article. save that for a, <coughs> a rainy day? review of budget of Warren articles. Well, that's the Warren article that already passed. Well, and so I don't know when to talk about. Can't do anything for us here with this budget. Well, probably when I talk to the slug. I don't know. Is it encumbered? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 for over four hundred thousand dollars right. was taken from the taxpayers to do the work. So I want to know about the status of the work. We it's never still got not part of. of this yes, budget. That's fine. I just want to know we'll when I can talk about it. We'll find a place for it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Appreciate we'll that. Find and a place. I will. Yield but the floor at this thank point. Thank you very much. Moving I, on, Bob. I'll yield the floor. <laughs> hey, salt and sand, we get it from Portsmouth, right? Mm -hmm. Is what's going to happen if that pile disappears up there? We have a backup plan. We have a backup plan. Because aren't they eventually going to do away with the, the, uh, the scrap metal pile and that whole area? I don't know. In the I've, future? I've or? only heard rumors. I haven't heard any rumors about salt. I know they are having issues with the scrap metal, but I think it's two separate issues. All right, so we're, we're still safe for a while, right? Okay. All right, then I was just curious about that. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, there's two piles. I'm not going to give you a tutorial on how to use your manpower. Um, the only question I had was, it seemed like in your, in your discussions, I've heard three, four um, items when you said you put things out to bid and nobody bid. Is, is that unique to us here, or is that a phenomenon that's happening everywhere with uh, with the economy and people aren't bidding on things? It's a number of factors. Um, one is the... Um, uh, workload right now. Contractors have a lot of work out there. Uh, two is that uh, the, the town's uh, bidding uh, requirements, like for instance, and I may not have these numbers at the top of my head exactly, but uh, we require, I believe, a $2 million bond. Well, for a contractor to, to do a contract in, in Hampton, for a contractor that has a $1,500 potential project in town isn't going to spend, I don't know what a $2 million bond would be, but it's mm -hmm. probably, you know, about $600. So if they're only making $1,500, so that's an issue. That's is that an unique, issue. Is that unique to us? That not necessarily. Not necessarily. And then the insurance requirements, too. So I, I don't want to be critiquing that. That's not really for me to, you know, that's the town selectman's policy. Mm -hmm. But I'm just being straight with you. I have had contractors. We have had contractors say, we'll actually call contractors and try to entice them to, to bid. Just like the downtown drainage project that we had. Two contractors. And they bid high. They bid twice what we had estimated because of the problems with dealing with the downtown area and, and everything. So we have some obstacles that maybe the private sector don't have to deal with. <coughs> but it's not just exclusive. In the other communities I've worked, we've had the same issues, that contractors, they, uh, they think that, you know, and the other thing is that a lot of contractors have had experiences with communities, not just Hampton, where they spend the time and effort in putting into a bid and then the community decides to reject all the bids because there was only two bidders or because it was over budget and so it discourages them because time is money for them yeah, every minute they spend the business, but. all right <clears throat> just to follow up to Joe's question about Fairfield and Ruth um, they've been waiting a long time since the road was tore up 
I know you said it's got to go before the selectmen. My first question is, if it's approved by the selectmen, what time frame do you see? And if it's not approved, what would the time frame be? And what would be the next step? If it's approved it as a warrant article, and that's the plan right now, we'd jump on that right in the early spring you know, to get that done. Uh, we could start putting out a bid for that right after, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, after the vote. Uh, if it's not approved, then you know, I don't know what to tell you. It's going to have to wait another year for the potential for funding. There would be no other funding available. <clears throat> Get me originally, because I was at the men's room. May I ask one question? Okay. We have everybody working on trash and recycling in the summertime, right? Not everybody, but we... I mean, a bunch of people. Not yeah, we have a bunch current. of people. Figuratively speaking, we have a lot of people doing that. When does that actually taper off? Because I noticed we're trying to patch in November. Right, after, we right get, after Seafood Festival. Why can't we do that in September? Is we, my question. We are. We started right we, after, we, we, right we after Seafood Festival. Where did, I didn't see any fresh patching anywhere in September. Did you? That's, the, the roads were all marked off. Well, we do grinding. It's a two-step process. We have to go out and grind the roads, and yeah. then we go out and, 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 of course, we've got zillions of other things to do as well. You yeah. Know. Uh, roadside mowing. We've got, I mean, our guys are really very, very busy. No argument there, but when right after Seafood Festival, we yeah. went down to Nine Nut Ave, replaced I don't know seventy five feet of sidewalk down there. Okay. Jack hammered it out. We go down to fifty two Nut and paved a swale we were supposed to pave a year ago. Oh wow! Then we moved over to some other street we were supposed to pave in the spring. <laughs> so by the third week of September into October, then the milling machine was out and more active. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's not picking on you. I was no, just no, trying to no. figure out You're why. asking a little fair question. We, we have all the people, a lot of people busy with mm -hmm. recycling and so forth in the three summer months. And I was thinking, gosh, we're all the marking everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really see any patching until just recently. And I think <clears> you won't be able to get any hot top at this time of year. It's getting too cold for right. it, isn't it? Yes. Well, you can buy the hot top. You just mm. putting it down is problematic. Okay. Because of the conditions. Well, thank you guys for trying. I'm not no. picking on you at all. I was no. just curious. Understood. Thank you. Can I ask why, why the reference to the seafood festival? Because it's we have, um, well, we see a dramatic drop off of volume right after the seafood festival trash volume. So there's a, a root shift. So it's trash related. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yep. Do I have anything else from anybody else on this? <coughs> so, item three, Municipal Sanitation Wastewater Treatment Administration. We need to vote. We need to vote. On 4312, right? Yep. Right. On that amount of 440930 mm -hmm. it was moved, seconded, and discussed. I can live with this. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Keep your hands up. Anybody on this? Side? And no. No, we're all pure Dave. except Dave. And abstain. <coughs> okay. I'm going to give you guys a five minute break. Oh, yeah. I know. Down. I know. But come back with a little bit of zest and zeal. How did we forget the street? Forty-three well, sixteen. Was on the last page. page. Oh, two. Separate. All right. So, Mr. Wardell. Move uh, two hundred and fifteen thousand. Is that correct? Two twelve, isn't it? Hmm? Two hundred fifteen thousand. Two hundred fifteen thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Second. Second. All over. Everywhere. Let's vote on it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, but you could change. Yeah, yes. <laughs> quite honestly. Yeah. All those in favor? Well, where are we at? What? Street lights? 16, 16, 101. 101. 101? Street lights. Before. Oh, well, hey, well, yeah. I don't know what we can do about that at this point. Okay. Hold on. Sunny? <laughs> okay. Unanimous? Unanimous. Yeah. Unanimous? That's 2162. No, that's uh, two fifty. <laughs> 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 Next. All right. 
Moving along. Yep. What page now, Mike? 103. Um, well, well no, Minister yeah. Sanitation. Yeah, but the numbers are 109. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> okay, I move uh, 1,490,205. Second. All right. We'll let you go back uninterrupted, <coughs> please, to the questions. So, municipal sanitation wastewater treatment. Question A What constitutes the 4.9% increase in the wage account? That goes back to the original answer I had to the question, Jerry, about the other accounts, that those are all union contracts and they are. Uh, step increases. Um, They're all CBA jobbers? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. okay. Item B, seasonal and part-time wages. How many hours and over what period of time and at what rate of pay is this just for summer? It's 1063 an hour. 40 hours a week, 13 weeks, and yes, it is just for the summer. Good. C, engineering services, budgeted to 10,000 in 2014. What were the task key? Explain the tasks. Uh, that would be mowing the lawns, weed whacking, scrubbing the tanks, uh, cleaning and painting. 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 Okay. That's what I thought. C, engineering services budgeted 10000 2014, spent seventeen fifty through September. Explain, please. Um, this is a general account that we use for consultant services as needed. It is necessary. We got lucky this year that between Mike's area of expertise and Chris and my own, we have not needed to hire an engineer other than <clears throat> for that amount there but uh, that, we've, that we've spent. Um, do, do you see, do you <clears throat> project any needs in this area for 15? I think, yes, I think next year is going to be a, um, a challenging year because we haven't been able to invest in some of our infrastructure improvements, which means that we're going to have to get some outside consultants to come in to help us to kind of piece things together. You know, you spent almost 9000 in 2013. Right, that's what I'm saying. We that, That's a general consulting account that we need to have available. Uh, if we have a process control problem that, you know, we have in high um, pHs or BODs or whatever, it gives us the flexibility to, be, to, to hire, like, uh, Wright Pierce engineers to come in and provide some limited consulting services. Spent 31,011 and 12,912, so I guess it is in line. And there is a, another project that I have in mind for the blower aeration building. Oh, yeah. About tying that into the emergency generator. Oh. And have an electrical engineer to figure that out. Well, you got but four blowers in that room, right? Three blowers. Oh, you should got one shut down or you have four? Or no, there's a future spot for a four. <clears throat> okay, so you got three blowers in there and you're. What are you doing again? Blowing air into the, the tanks up on the hill? Yeah, yeah aeration. Yeah. 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 So what were you gonna do? Uh, tied those that whole building is not tied into the emergency generator. Oh, okay. Tied up to the emergency generator. That makes sense. Okay. What else? Did I have? The explain plan for staff development for 2015. That's really just ongoing education for CEUs that the uh, licensed operators need to have. Um, to, to do the job, they have to have, every year. They have to have continuing education credits. <coughs> All right. <coughs> uh, e tipping fees for, for information purposes. How many hours a day is the press running? Are we running all six cylinders? Yeah. Uh, yes, we are using all six cylinders. Uh, how many hours a day are you running, Mike? Uh, this month it's averaging eight. Yes, yeah, what I figured. Um, nine hours a day. Yeah. Nine hours a day. Two hundred fifty tons. Two hundred fifty-four tons a month is what you're talking about. So that works out to eight, eight or nine hours a day. Yeah. And now, so what are your utilization rate then? Is uh, it's from year to date is thirty-eight percent. Year to date. Yeah. As I recall, it was like. It, re it reached 40 percent or 42 percent in the summer. Yeah. But it dropped to 30, 35 percent. Yeah. 
All right. Okay. I, I was information, and uh, so we're running around a thirty percent plus uh, utilization on that press. How is it working? Great. Same as the old back, so strong back end. Yeah. Right? Okay. Go ahead. F supplies hundred thousand dollars. The two thousand fourteen budget dollars were tight for supplies. When one looks at 2011, 12, and 13 actuals, which averaged 101, what is the supply status level at this time? Yeah, <clears throat> that is to say, how you fit for supplies going into next year, or are you really going to need to? Yeah, I think we've spent uh, 86,000 so far. Yeah, and, and you're, you're looking to spend the same. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. G gasoline and diesel. Now we've talked about that. We're yeah. To, uh, H that. chemicals looks a bit high when one looks back on the actuals. Uh, we have been uh, optimizing our uh, pumps and for the chlorine and the bisulfite usage, so it has been down a little bit. Has chlorine gone up in cost, Mike? Or no, it actually uh, went down a little bit. So what's the big chemicals, Mike? Well, we have the chlorine, the sodium bisulfite, and then the polymer that the we polymer, use to, yeah. to water the sludge. So, what was the what are you asking for this year? Uh, the, the chemicals. The same. Uh, one fifty-five. Chemicals, one hundred fifty-five k looks a bit high. When one looks back on one forty-one average for three years. <clears throat> And the annualized rate through September is 120, so it looked a bit high, about 10, 15 k high to me. But the chemical usage is pretty much based off of your flow and the loadings that go through the plant. Like this past month, with all the extra rain, we had put through an extra 15 million gallons flow. I know, but you had 141. You had you spent 141 k average for the three years, 11, 12, and 13. And you analyze through this year through the 120, so you're still you're looking for 155k. It looked to me like it was a bit high, Mike. Um, like I said, it's one of those figures that will probably fluctuate throughout the, okay. the year with the flow and then the, the loadings. Are actually our loadings have been a little higher the past. Uh, three, Is your PM system still in place? Yes. And uh, how are you running yellows and greens and all that? Good. We've been averaging between 15 to 25. Okay. Yeah. And the uh, spare parts program is in place? Yeah. Okay. And all the metrics are oh, still there? Yeah. My Carl. Okay. What's the sludge blanket, best blanket of 8,000? What's that all that about? Uh, we wanted to uh, optimize our sludge readings for the tanks. It's like a uh, probe that you would put into the tank, the clarifiers, to measure the... Uh, the depth of the sludge in each tank. And you need a blanket? You know? Yeah, each tank will build a sludge blanket and then... Cover the whole tank? No, it, it's actually the sludge is in the, in, the towards, in the tank towards the bottom. In the tank? Oh, build a blanket, okay. Build. Yeah, so it'll actually monitor it so we can keep better track of that. Is that the first time we've done that or what? It's a new technology that they came out with. When? When? Uh, a few years ago. Have you had it in your budget? Uh, no, not last year. This is a new entry, 8000 bucks. Yeah. Nothing there in 11, 12, 13, 14. Now here comes 8000 for a sludge blanket. <laughs> it's not for the sludge blanket. It's it, called a sludge judge, it, is it? Sludge no, that's to manually do yeah. it. That's how we do it now. They have this automated thing that oh. you put in there. Oh, okay. You're, you're saying Probe. you've got sludge in the bottom of your primary clarifier. Yes. And you want to measure it accurately. Yes. Okay. So we can trend that through our SCADA system. All right, gotcha. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know if you were trying to pull some kind of a blanket over the <laughs> Yeah, they covered the tank. <laughs> Pigs in a blanket kind of thing? <laughs> no, I said I wouldn't want to be a part of that blanket. <laughs> All right, what else we got here now? Um, um, stainless steel grid box, talk to me about that, 40K. Yeah, that's up at our uh, septic site. We have just a regular steel uh, box it. that we would scoop out the sand. Oh, yeah. That's in that front building there, where the water no, comes No, it's in. up by the septic site where the septic haulers would offload or then the RVers would. Okay. Um, so they rake out anything that gets caught in the, the grates, and then that goes in this box, which is outside to the, the elements. So you I have actually, one today? I actually got a picture of it right here. And you can oh. see the, all the, the whole bottom of it is all corroded. Let me see. It's a roll-off container. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, yeah. 
But we have a stainless steel version, one of these, in our headworks. Yes. And that thing's a lot, you know, it's it's like brand right. new still. And so I wanted to invest in one of these, so well, why not? It looks like it's needed. Yeah. And what is it? What do you need with a cement mixer? <laughs> well, that's uh, the sewer and drain request. You're mixing slowly together here. That's the sewer and drain request. Ah, which uh, is, they they want to pour some concrete, put it in a box, and stick me in it. Cement <laughs> shoes. So that came um, in from no. That's that's to replace a 1991 mm -hmm. cement mixer that we yep. have, and it's in your place. Why no, is it in the sewer and drain? Sewer and drain. They're, they're part of the wastewater treatment plant. Oh, okay. Part of they that budget, that, that section of the budget. So are you comfortable with the wastewater treatment plant today? Yes. I don't have a Madam Chairman. You good? On, on the uh, wastewater. I'm quite familiar with the operation. All right. Moving right along. Sure. Almost set. <clears throat> Sunny? All set. Just <laughs> Brian. Um, page 104. Um, overtime necessary to respond to Rye. Why don't we charge Rye? We, we do. We get reimbursed for our time, yeah. Cover till we get paid back. Yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> we have about 15 pump stations, right? Mm -hmm. I'm good. Thanks. I'm good on this one. I'm all set. Chair, I'll yield my time to the Right Honorable Mr. Pierce, which seems very anxious to ask a question. Well, she keeps skipping me because she thinks I'm taking a nap. Oh, I haven't forgotten No, you, you know, Mike, you're in that corner, and then Jerry takes control. Blame Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Should I kick Jerry? Okay. I have a question about tipping fees. I thought we, they were connected to CPI or something. In other words, there was a certain rating. That's increase. true for the trash. Okay. Not necessary for sludge. This okay, so, is for sludge. So when you do sludge, does that change every year then? It depends on a couple of factors. One is an environmental fee that is assessed to us, uh -huh. and I'm not sure exactly how they calculate that, but it's not just a matter of the CPA. It's so you really don't know what you're going to be paying next year until sometime late in the season? Yeah, about, uh, I think they let us know about September, October in that time frame. Because I noticed it went up about 6% or something like that, and yeah. I didn't know if that was the case. <coughs> Probably I don't have much of an increase in sludge, but probably an increase in the fees, tipping fees. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. We always see an increase to some extent in those fees. But it's not tied to like the one for the trashes. And I, I think that's a component, but I think there's an additional component with an environmental fee that's an additional cost that we don't have for okay. the solid waste. And the only other question I had was about the one that Brian already asked, so that takes care of that one. And then... Um, uh, the only other thing I had was Jerry's pet with the gas and stuff, so I'm all set. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Yeah. But how close to capacity are you at? Another, well, asking it another way, with the building that's now in the pipeline, will that affect capacity? It depends on how you look at capacity. The state looks at, you, you could look at the total capacity of the, the, the plant at, say, 100% capacity. But the state starts getting nervous at 80%. If you get to 80% of your volume through your, through your plant, the state would then put a moratorium because they don't want to wait until the last minute. But we just negotiated a new capacity, and I can't remember exactly what that was with Ray Pierce. Yeah, it's 4.7 right now. That's okay. 4.7 million, 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 million gallons a day. What is the percentage of capacity presently? Uh, it's about 2.5, is it? Is yeah, our average flow. About 2.5. So we're not near the 80 percent? I mean, it was like no. something no. complex. Once we hit around 3.9. What about then? seasonally in the summer? How close to capacity you come for the summer month? Our, our capacity, the bigger issue with our capacity is the spikes that we would get. We get so much infiltration and inflow in our system that we have more spikes in actual, um, you know, daily usage. So, but they average it out. They don't take those spikes here. So there may be a day that we may be nearing, you know, the 4.7 million, but over a period of an averaging, we're okay. So... So the current level of development you're not concerned about? Correct. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat>
Back to tipping fees. Just to expand on what Mike said a little bit, we're talking here about what it, the cost of taking this sludge and what? Sludge. Sludge and grit yeah. to another facility. That, well, first of all, you've got to compress it and... Is that what yeah, you're yeah, talking about? Yeah, the sludge gets to water. It's got to be dried out, right? And seven, transported to know, where? Who do we pay that to? What are these two thousand dollars to? Waste management. Some context. Waste management takes it. Do they take it, or we have to deliver it? We deliver it. We deliver. deliver it with our own yeah. trucks Rochester. and staff. Turnkey. Rochester. All right. All right. Okay. I don't know who's getting the money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, well, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No I'm questions. Sorry. What's up, nice. hmm? Mike, one question. What's the water content of that? Are we still around 25% solid, 75% water? Yeah, it's been coming out 26, 27s, and actually we're going through and demoing some new types of polymers. Good. And I'd like to see that up around 30 if we get there. Yeah, we've been averaging, if we're just doing straight primary, it's in the we're, high We're 30s. essentially hauling water. 75% of what we're hauling is water. <clears throat> now, if we could dry it out through either uh, centrifuge or infrared, that would be wonderful, except it would drive up electricity costs to beat the hell. Yeah. And uh, so you're caught between. We're using the, the best press we can, but in order to dry that sludge out, there's only two methods that I'm aware of, centrifuge and infrared, and or just spread it all over the ground until it dries out with the sun. But centrifuge and infrared is just not very cost-effective because it utilizes a lot of electricity. As a matter of fact, all the Hamptons lights probably were dim. Why don't we spread that all over the ground okay. like you suggest? Are we done with discussion? You can't do that. Yes. Okay. We have so. a motion. We have a side. I'm sorry. Do you got anything you'd like to no. add to that, Keith? <coughs> I didn't mean to interrupt you. All right. We have a motion. We have a second. We have had our discussion. Count 4321 vote, right? Did I leave anybody off over here? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somehow it drifted back over there to my group. So everybody's good? Okay. All those in favor? Yeah. That's right. Opposed? Abstain. Please note, um, Don't forget Steve. Steve left, so the counts on the votes will be different right. for the second half. Right. Thank you. Okay. Where are we in solid waste, Madam Chair? Municipal uh, sanitation, yeah. solid waste. Collections on 119. 113. 113. Yeah. 113. Move uh, 535,079 dollars. Thank you. Okay. So. Um, Question A, regular wages up 5.8%, goes back to the original discussion about the increases in collective bargaining agreements. They're all contractual CBAs. Yes. Um, question B, overtime wages up 14.85% to 19,524. That again is a result of um, doing work in other, those people in that account doing work in other areas like with voting as well as the increases in the collective bargaining agreements um, amounts of uh, their pay. We're not taking on any new routes or, you know, doing any additional uh, pickups. It's just a matter of the, the wages. C, diesel fuel needs an adjustment. It goes back to the original Six. issue of the diesel. Yeah. Uh, recycling hauling. Uh, 56,000, 215, and 213, 214 annualized, annualized from September is 50.7K, Y85. Our contract with our existing recycling hauler is, expires June 30th, and I'm anticipating 
uh, that that cost is going to go up uh, a fair amount. So we're just trying to cover our bases. I'm, I'm actually, as we speak, working on the bid to, to go out for those services for hauling trash and recycling. So you'll see the same thing on the, the trash. Uh, How soon hauling. will you have those in the bids? The bids, will you have them before uh, the end of the year? It's probably going to be about a month okay. before I get those back and get it. It's a very, very complicated bid. Say date again. Okay. That's a 52% set. That's a 52% jump, Keith. Right. I don't think it's going to raise that much. That may be one. Day. Well, it depends. If we end up continuing to go, one of the bidders that we have is Eco Main up in uh, Portland. And that cost could be considerable, but they've actually given the district, Solid Waste District, a lower bid. So I have to tie in the bids for hauling to where we're going to go. We have four options to where we could haul our trash to. So that's where it gets complicated is i got to evaluate the cost of hauling. So you built a safety distance. factor here? I'm building at this point, yes. What was the date that, that was? June 30th. June 30th, thank yes. you. Yes. 2015. And I set it up so all our contracts are um, recycling, trash hauling is expires June 30th, as well as our recycling contract and our uh, for our um, recycling disposal site, as, as, as well as the uh, solid waste disposal site. So all of them are expiring on June 30th. <coughs> Thank you. So us through that section, I believe. Yep. Mm -hmm. Landfill. <clears throat> that solid waste disposal <laughs> and the landfill leads it off. I got a question. I have a question. Uh, yeah, maybe we got to fold up. Yeah. Okay. You don't have anything else in there, Jerry, so I, I, I'm going to go back to Michael. Please. Fine. <laughs> Start there, Mike. Uh, yeah, I was looking on 115. It's, actually, it's a sort of a carry-on from that question I asked about the heavy mm -hmm. piece that got uh, a while ago. Yeah, but we're, That's not on, we're not on 115. That was too far. We're, going, we're ending at 113, so. Oh, 113. You got okay. anything on what we've discussed so oh, far? Oh, sorry, I'm off. In, in, what, were, what were the pages again? I'm sorry. Well, we're on page 130. Okay. I'm going to move on to Joe. We'll end with you, Joe. I guess my question is more for the selectmen. On the seasonal part-time wages in the default budget, you got $86,000 in the default budget. Why Why so? I mean, you only, you only used 48 last year. Why the big difference? The 2015 default. We have been, I, I can answer that question, that we, with all the accounts, we're trying to separate the accounts uh, into individual compartments so that snow removal is in one section. And when I first got here, it was all kind of lumped into two or three different accounts, and now we're trying to get a better handle. So we've been separating those out. So hopefully next year you're going to get a better picture of how all these things shake out. Yeah, but your actuals for last year was 48000 Okay, you're 24 this year. Which page are you on now? 111. Yeah. 4323.1.121. All right. If you look in the default budget, you have the eighty-six nine twenty-five that you were asking for in, in the two thousand and fourteen. But you're only asking for twenty-seven for this year. Right. So what I'm, my question is, why is the default budget? If oh, this okay. doesn't pass, why is the default budget so high, so much higher? Good question. Is the default? Uh, You're saying the 2015 default, default budget? Yeah. Higher? Right. The 2015. If you look at on uh, the for that, it would be o, OBS 11. Okay. It's. It says it's 86,000. 86,925. That's a default. That's our current budget as well as last year's budget. Why? Because it's default budget this year, and that's what. That's what it <coughs> okay, but 2013 actuals. It's 48 168. <laughs> Why the big jump? We because the budget carried over. You're, you're asking about last year's budget. We'll carry over. 
So, yeah, that's it's, where I'm at. I'm not, yeah. That's my question. That's just the, the, right. that's one of those functional things that if that number moves forward in that account. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the operational law of the law of the oh, default budget. Oh, you mean budget. 14. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So you're dragging all that across. Yeah. But these seasonal, these seasonal, this is summer seasonal, right? Mm -hmm. This this line item. Mm -hmm. So what I do... And part-time. And part-time. So, you know, what I noticed is that... Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Joe, but no, just to follow up on your I'll, question. You, you can go. Uh, the actuals, you're right, for the end of the year was 48166. Yeah. But in September of 13, the actuals was 41,550. And so somehow about six hundred, six, $7,000 got in there between the end of September and the end of December. And if this is a summer account, I don't understand that. There's another factor, and I, I can't tell you right now exactly how it worked, but with those two part, there was two part-time employees that were coming out of that account. And they are both working 30 hours. They are part time. We took and I got this approval from the town manager and selectman to convert the two 30-hour people into one full-time person, so that we'd have them full-time using the same value of those two 30-hour week people. And then the balance of that money, there was some money left over from doing that sort of swap. Then we were able to put a seasonal person on for a limited amount of time. I can't tell you at this point in time exactly how all that math worked out, but that's that's what happened. So this full time, uh, part time, and full time occurred in 2013 or 2014? 20. 13. Yeah. I think it was the What was the answer? I believe it was towards the end of. I'm not sure off the top of my head right now exactly. It was towards the end of 13 going into 14 when we made that change. I can't remember exactly where that dividing point was. How many how many employees did we do that with? Just 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 two. Two employees. But went we, from full part time to full time. No, one. One went from full part time. Two, went the two were dissipated and he, he apparently got one full time. Correct. <clears throat> you're paying that one full time out of this line item that's marked. No, that goes into regular wages. Okay, but my question was about the part time line item. Right. Uh, I can't tell you, I, I'm, to be truthful with you, right now, I can't tell you off the top of my head how all that math worked out. I had. Yeah, this it is kind of like an accounting visibility issue again. We've had a couple of these. And okay. That's okay. I'll, I'll just, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Joe. No, I'm also. Thank you for yielding, by the way. You know what? I'm going to interject something here. Not only the fact that it's getting late, but I think that this piece is really important to us to figure out manpower in this budget. And right now, to me, it's great. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how even pushing forward with this. For me, personally, I'd be able to vote on this one way or the other. I don't know what your sentiment is. I suspect that, looking around, if all of you have questions, that if you step back, you'd want to ask. I think there's, you know, there's a general, we've seen this in the last few meetings, there's some general uh, visibility issues, some of which are born because of the default budget scenario where you've got a operational law required to take this line item over there and you actually want to fund something else into that. And, and so, you know, you get the general accounting visibility problems that come with that. Then there are other just normal um, needs for more visibility in terms of wages. And, you know, the, the statement with regard to the wage increases uh, that I've heard from DPW just broadly uh, have been you know, union contracts but, and catch-up. And, and, uh, and, and to me, you know, I, I do these strange things like read court cases, and I found this court case that says something about an evergreen clause. So, you know, if you have a union contract in the state of New Hampshire and, you, and it expires, an evergreen uh, requires that you continue with that contract, so the raises would continue to go on. So, we never bought into it. That's not it. Yeah, that's that's not not that, there is an evergreen clause but they don't necessarily apply to all of your CBAs. <coughs> right. There's some law change in that. So you're, you're right. There is a concept called an evergreen clause, in which case you would continue with steps, not necessarily the raises that would continue. 
Was, was the, step, are the steps related to promotions or? <coughs> steps are generally related to time on the job, seniority, right. time on the job, okay. not promotions. Okay. So steps would continue as you progress through it, but your raises that, you know, X that you get each year, cost of living, to those expire with the, 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 but again, being very clear, our CBAs don't have those provisions in it. He's right. We, we no, don't have then, then you, when they expire, you go into what's called a status quo position. None of our none of our unions are our covered by. Do not, have yeah, not to my knowledge, Tim. I remember this. That's whole a curiosity thing. which I'll ah. explore outside the meeting. It's uh, very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So the pleasure of this committee at this point. But hang on for a second. This this page one eleven. Does people in trucks? It's collection, right? It says collection. Mm -hmm. Solid waste collection. Is it? Is it People with trucks? Yeah. Okay, it's not the transfer station. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's always, uh, I was, not going to get, I was. All right, yeah. if you want to keep Please going. don't overcomplicate it. I mean, the, the, the reality for that account is just as I said, I'm very clear on that. I don't, I'm not clear on how the default amount is derived from. That's, <laughs> I'm not clear. But what I am clear as far as personnel, if you have a question on personnel, what we did. We took, like I said, two part-timers right. and converted it to one full-time there was no increase in the budget from that move so I'm clear on your request here to keep going forward all right your actual for seasonal and part-time wages in 2013 was 48,166 but your request for 2015 is only 27,638 that's what he said that's correct <coughs> 20000 well, basically $20,000 less for your part-time and the seasonal because you have two people that went to full-time somewhere in that mix. One of the two. One of, one one of, the, of two. the two went to full-time in that mix. And I can, I can also offer, Madam Chairman, that in 011 he spent 77000 there, and in 012, 60000 And 13 it dropped. And 14, he got 17, and he spent so far, well, through September 25, and he's asking for, you know, or he's asking 27. So when I saw that, <clears throat> I was happy to see the 27. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the regular wages are, are going up 15,000, and the part time wages are going down, what, 20,000? But the regular wages are going up because of raises. Well, no, I'm just adding up all the wages kind of in my head. <coughs> and I'm, thinking, I'm seeing more or less flat on the wages of the three line items over time, part-time and regular. I mean, I don't, I don't see any big increase here at all. Then let's keep going. I don't think there's a problem there. No. I, I didn't. That wasn't the impression I had. Do you, you want to... Uh, Look at this, Eileen, and maybe draw a line as the no, helpful. I'm good. We can keep going. The only issue that it raises really is when he converted part time to full time. Are oh, the fringes? The fringe benefits get paid out of a Here's out of an account. The yeah. bottom line budget, but not out of Keith's budget. But I still so there's an increase cost. that is well, no, it's not an increase to your budget, but it's an increase to the bottom line budget for the time. Somewhere, and that increase is kind of one of the accounting visibility issues that I I keep seeing that we need to address somehow. Well, Keith, back to you. I think that closes up that section. Okay. Questions? Where do we stop? I think him. I'm done. You done? Stop. All set. All set. All set. All set. All set. Okay. All right. We have a motion. We have a second. We've had our discussion. All those in favor? Jerry? I'm abstained, I think, on this one. Okay. Opposed? And abstentions, yeah. Jerry. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next section. So this is uh, landfill operations. Um, question number one, monitoring inspection looks high by 9,000. Uh, 15,000. I'm sorry, we need to move. We, have, we need to move, move it. Hey, just okay. Hang on. 113. 113. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Solid waste collection. Landfill operations. 
Uh, move 20,000. Second. Why the jump, Keith? Actually, I was going to proactively suggest a decrease in that $15,000 number to $7,800. We just had a, a new bid on that, so we were able to make that or suggest that reduction. $7,800? 7800 From 15000 to 7800 okay. Which line is that That's, uh, That is the monitoring yeah. inspections. Yes. Oh, on, the, on the landfill? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. $7,800? Yeah. So cool. Okay. Second. How can I refuse a reduction? Mm. All right. All those in favor of right. reducing that number to 7,800? Yeah, all right. Just that one line item. Yes, yep. that just one that line one line item. item. Right. Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? Unanimous. Okay. Um, on the second question, groundwater monitoring three times a year, yet year to date in 2014 is zero. Uh, that work still needs to be done, or it has been done, and there will be that expense before the end of the year of $2,000. Supposed to do it three times a year, Keith. You haven't done it yet. Uh, I, I, think we, I think we've done it. I'm sure that we've done what we've had to do. I'm just not sure they billed us for it yet. Mm -hmm. I can take the time and can see if it's in the um, appropriation report. Zero was also seen in 2013. 1750 in 2011. They're just not spending. Although in 14, it's actual to date. I know that we're in compliance um, with that. I think they just wait until they get all three to bill us. That will be, you will see that expense by the end of the year. You have to do it. You're right. I'm, I'm agreeing with what you're saying. But they, these engineering firms sometimes will wait until they yeah. do all three. Maybe the, the contract's so low, they do it that way. Yeah. You know. okay. One would think every four months or something you'd see something. Right. No. Um, any more discussion on that? I think we just need to amend the motion. We, did, we, yeah. we amended it. Right. Or you changed the subline under it. Yeah. yeah. So we need to well, amend 12,000 to 12,200. Amend it to 12,200. And the second on that? Second. All those in favor of the amendment to 12,200 as a 12 12 12 12 12 12 12 12 12 right. 12,800. 12 it was 7,800, right? Yeah, I got 7,800. Yeah. 12, 8, 12, 8, 12, 8, 12, 8, 12, 12,800. Yeah, 12,200 plus 7,800 is 20,000. So the new number is 12,800. 12,200. 200. 200. That's what I said to you. $12,200. dollars $12, yeah. was what we reduced it by right. from $20,000. Reduced it by. Well, hang on, reduced hang it on. by or reduced it to $7,800? Did we reduce it to $7,800 or by $7,800? The new number should be $7,800. So that case is $12,800. No. So that's $12,800. Twelve eight. So Jimmy, you're moving yes. that? What's it gonna cost us? Twelve eight. Twelve eight. <laughs> it's gonna cost us twelve eight? Twelve yes. eight. Twelve eight. I moved the seventy eight hundred. I want to make sure. Like yes. We reduced it to seventy eight hundred. Reduced it seventy eight hundred. Right. Oh, I thought it was gonna Front cost seventy eight hundred. That's what I'm saying. It is gonna the new right. number the number is seventy eight hundred. The number is correct. <laughs> Mr. Waddell is correct. I am absolutely correct. I seconded his right. motion. I, already I thought we were reducing it by so yeah. Yeah, yeah. I already seconded it. Like we're cool. ready to too. move on. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> She's taking a nap. It was your nap. <laughs> Transportation account. That was all in favor, right? Did you ask for a post? We need to vote. Yeah, it was unanimous. Yeah, unanimous. Twelve thousand eight hundred for that line item of okay. infield operations. Okay. Yeah. Voted unanimously. Yeah. All set. Yeah. Uh, transportation account waste hauling. It goes back to the. Um, Did we move the number yet? 
No. 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 And that's on 119, I believe. Yeah. 115. 115. Yeah. 119. 119, you're right. 119? Wait, transportation? Well, yeah. We'll be doing transportation. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Jim. Where, 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 Christy, what, what, number? what number? You guys have been moving totals all along, yeah. and then all of a sudden you switch to subtotals. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't either. So if you want the total of the whole section, which you've been doing all night, it's you need 119. 119. Yes, okay. Let's do that. Okay, so solid waste of 1,065,779. Second. Is that right, Christy? It is. Yes. The number just right. changed, though, because you changed That's that right. number. That's right. Yeah. Take one so what is it going to be? Can you give us the correct number? 1,065,779. That's 1,065,779. No, she's got to change no, it. It's going to be one million. One million. $58,579. Okay, so I move $1,058,579. Yes. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. Now we could go back to okay. Now you can go back to transportation, but now you've done it in the same order you've done all the other ones tonight. Okay. Yeah, so the transportation now. account, waste time, looks to be 8000 higher. Uh, at 153k than justified. Again, that goes back to the waste hauling is in the process of putting out to bid, so we have to carry that amount to make sure that we cover any increases that come out of that bidding process. So you buffered it. You're, 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 you buffered yourself. Yeah. I'm expecting in both cases those costs to increase. Yeah, you've been running 134, 2014 annualized is 115. <clears throat> now you're coming at 153, and that's a buffer, you're saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's a big buffer. Mm -hmm. And when were you know, Keith? Uh, I hope to have the bids out within a month, so we should know within a month and a half. This year? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know about this uh, year, maybe right after the, the first year. It's kind of tough to do bidding around the holidays. How long have you known? that we needed to put this out to bid? Relatively recently, because we're waiting for the solid waste district that we're getting out of put out a bid for uh, disposal sites. And even though we're getting out of the district, they put a provision in there that Hampton can tack on to their pricing, which actually benefits them. And they just had their bid opening about a month ago. And I just had a meeting last Wednesday night with the district to finalize the results. So I had to find out what our disposal site costs, our disposal options would cost before then I get into the hauling aspect of it. <coughs> because I needed to know who bid, so now I know there's four bidders for that, now for, for where we can have options to all, to, I mean, to dispose of the trash. So now I can include all four of those in options for hauling our material. Is he co main bidding on that? Yes. Thank you. Okay. I'm good. You have anything else to offer on this section? Mike, questions? I don't think it's the cost of living again. If that's been in every budget. Every budget, yeah. right? It's in the on the five thirty one there on page one fifteen. Yep. Increase five seventy one, right? Five seven one. Am I on the right page? Uh, page oh. one fifteen. Yeah, Michael, where are you? Off oh, the top, mm -hmm. the top line there. Wasting, hipping fees, oh, yeah. yeah. No, one point five percent. It's not cost of living; it's the CPI. 
CPI, right. So how did we get a five seven one? Have more trash to it? No, as I said, I had to build in a well, if you look at the actual for mm -hmm. two thousand and thirteen was five forty seven mm -hmm. or five forty eight. So I, yeah. I put in the one point five percent that I know and okay. then I just averaged it out to five fifty five. But also, I put a slight buffer in there, knowing that, or theorizing that the cost will probably go up and we'll go out to bid. When is that going out to bid? I'm working on the bid right now. Okay, I think, is that hand in hand with the hauling? Hand in hand with the hauling, so no, to speak. I'm, I'm sorry, I, now I'm getting confused. Mike was talking I'm putting out the bid for hauling. Hauling. Mm -hmm. We've already had a bid through the district for the disposal site. Mm -hmm. So the bid for hauling is going, that's what I'm working on okay, right but now. You were talking about dipping fees, right? Yeah. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. So how, Mike says, how'd you get it at 555? Because I built in a buffer, buffer not knowing too. exactly where, what the, we don't know who we're going to go with, with a um, disposal site. We have four options. Right. All have different pricing. It's right. just set up. Good. So then you have to mesh that against four different, possibly four different haulers, for example. Absolutely. And try to come up with the best. And deal. then I also have to add in there the fact that we have our own trailers and getting a hauler. It's, it's extremely complicated. Okay. It's I understand that and I appreciate that. And I, I, that's all I have. So you just really want to make sure you have enough to sort of Thank cover you. the basis. I, I'm all set with that. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Can I say? Okay. Joe? Sonny? Seth? Okay. Seth. All right. <clears throat> Just real quick, the seasonal laborers and part time transfer station coordinator went up <clears throat> on the adjustment. Uh, yeah. What was that, Eileen? I didn't hear you. It's um, on the 4324 section, ending in 120. Oh, part time wages, you're down the transfer station. You're down the transfer station, huh? Yeah. That was something you had proposed? Mm -hmm. The town manager took it out? Mm -hmm. He raised Actually, it. Actually, he, he increased it. it. Um, well. The requested amount was sixteen thousand six hundred and forty-seven dollars, and the town manager increased that line item to seventeen thousand eight hundred. Okay. If you look on page one fifteen. So, how many part-time positions is this? One. So, one part-time laborer, and we have one part-time um, transfer station coordinator that works on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we have some seasonal help there as well. We have one person as seasonal help. Okay, so this line is how many people? Part-time wages is one, he said. Mm -hmm. Part-time wages would just be one person. But it's two it's total. Two total. It's seasonal too. Well, that's what I'm asking, yeah. how many one people in that line? That's so it's one okay, laborer yeah. and it's one part, one part-time coordinator. No. Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to know. I don't have any more Seasonable questions. labor, not labor. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to know how many people we were talking about. Mike? A little set. Okay. Tim? The uh, 555000 on the tipping fee, you said that was based on some estimates. Did I get that correctly? No, uh, well, a guesstimate. At this point, it, I, I honed it down into if you look at 2013, 548,000, okay, and then I added on the 1.5 CPI, which brought it up to a certain amount, and then I also know or I feel that we're going to get a slight increase in the cost anyway, so I just average it out to five, five, uh, 555,000. Thank you. No more, no more questions. Okay. No questions. No questions. No. All set. No. All right. So the number moved and seconded is 1,058,579. Am I correct on that? 179, isn't it? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Right, there was one further question that was not asked or answered, and that was on the overtime. The overtime <clears throat> wages were zero in 011, 78,000 in 012. <clears throat> that have been rising and leveling out at that level. 
Was there a policy change, Keith, here, where we had people working a regular shifts on Saturdays and Sundays and getting regular shift pays? We shifted away from that and paid time and a half overtime on Saturday and Sunday. Was there a shift that way? No, that's been that way for a number of years since I've been here, where they have full-time employees working overtime at the um, transfer station to co for coverage. For Saturdays and Sundays? For Saturdays and Sundays. So why don't we have a regular shift for Saturdays and Sundays and not have to pay overtime? Then we'd have to add people and right. benefits. No, I mean, you know, you just tell the guys not to come in on Monday and Tuesday, come in on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It's a union contract that prevents that. I don't know that. I don't know. Okay. That. Everybody ready to vote? Yep. All those in favor of moving the number. <clears throat> Opposed? I'm, I'm abstaining on this as well. All right, we're almost done, kids. All right. The next total would be the sewage collection? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I moved 289,000 okay. on page 119. Second. If you didn't get one already. Yeah, I did. Mike did. He did that already. All right. Um, the big one was there. a 130. What, what, what's that on the top? Okay. So... Um, we um, hired an engineering firm to do an I study at the beach, infiltration and inflow, and um, they identified uh, a number of areas where we're getting considerable or an exceptional amount of uh, infiltration and inflow, and they've identified like six different projects, some major um, uh, uh, sewer manholes that have real bad leaks in them. So we have an estimate, I believe it's around $112,000 to do those, that work down at the beach. And then we also need some extra money for emergency repairs, like if we had, like we have, not common, but somewhat common, uh, where we have collapses of sewers around town. So the difference between the 112 and the 130 is to cover emergencies. Can't believe it. You never spent that kind of money. 28,000 in low 11, 8,000 in low 12, 33,000 in 13. And now you're asking for 130k. Mm. Have to choke a horse. Well, I was waiting to get the results of that study to identify the worst case scenario so that we can prioritize our all work. At once, Keith? Is that what it is? 130,000 to do the complete job, or are you going to do this? Or what? No, the 130 will cover the immediate repairs that they're recommending to do. That will get the biggest bang for the buck for the infiltration and inflow. Is it down at the beach? Down at the beach. Where are those uh, streets coming off of Ashworth heading north, uh, west? Um, I've got it information. Is, is that where the infiltration is? Uh, seven or eight or nine streets that go west of off Ashworth. Th these are but numbers. Ashworth Ave, full wrap, lateral connection repair, $10,000. And they've got them by manhole numbers. I don't have the map with me, but manhole 169, and to repair that, a certain amount. So they've got to do well, they pass the camera down? At it. They pass the camera down? Yeah. And that's a and result they, of the study that you did? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, 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 and they came up with a bunch of pictures? Yes. And they then came up with a recommendation? Yes. You got who, right who would get the work? I'd put it out to bid. Okay. <clears throat> and we did this study last year, right? Uh, year? It went from last year into this year. They into did some year? of the flow monitoring this spring. And about how much of the beach did they do? Almost the whole beach? Percentage they did. They did the whole beach? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, this doesn't name the streets. Oh, I don't know. Those manhole numbers are in accordance with our mapping. So if you look at the town map for sewers, that say 369, that would show the location of that manhole. Ross, Ross Avenue area, Susan Lane, Badcock Avenue. Yeah. I, I, this, I, 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 don't, I, I don't make it on that. That's a big, big step, though. I mean, I, I can see getting the job evaluated and then getting it corrected over a period of a couple, two, three, three years, not just one big swallow. Well, Jerry, we, 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 we treat a billion gallons of wastewater a year at our wastewater treatment. <coughs> Over 50% of that is groundwater that we're paying to treat. 
very expensive that we're trying to get out of the system so we don't have to treat it because it's clean water. That's an attempt to do that. Stop picking away at it. <coughs> the day. Uh, so this is only a piece. That's a small piece. Yeah. Small piece. Piece. It's a small piece. Can you see that? Yeah, it's okay. hard to see uh, in the streets. All right. Well, let's not get hung up on this one line. It is what it is. It's a small piece of the project. <laughs> Do we know what the whole project would cost us? <laughs> it's, well, it's, it's the first one. step amongst less, giant no, steps. Let's don't even go there. Yeah. <laughs> well, does it have a price tag on it? Not that I know. Not at this point. Not My calculator doesn't study go that high. No. It's not complete? Is the study still ongoing? Or have we only done a certain area? The beach. That's all I get authorization to do from the selectmen was the beach area. That was, what, about two okay. years ago we authorized but, a hundred and some thousand yeah. the beach. Yeah. How much only of the, the beach? Wait, only the beach area has been. I'm just trying to wrap my arms around the total cost of this thing. Yeah. That, it, as it's getting, if it if it's a sizable number, might be better served on a warrant article. I don't like when we do studies, and then we do nothing after the study because it just means somewhere down the road we'll have to update the study. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> that will cost us more money, and half the time, if we put uh, all the studies together, we could have solved the problem. That's true enough. Of. What we need is a study of the studies. But to <laughs> grasp how much of what was involved in the study that this money would cover. And what percentage of the total that was, not the total that should be done mm -hmm. town-wide, because certainly there are other parts of town that are leaking, um, but if the beach was done in its entirety, it really would be helpful to have a number for what that study covered, mm -hmm. so that we could look at this piece and say, well, all right, it's a starting point. Why so we have a proposed warrant article to do some more streets down there, the whole street to replace the sewer lines. That's that's in works right now as a proposed warrant article. And this isn't out. part of it. No. But the same type of work is being done on this. No, this would be this is limited <laughs> spot repairs, and this would be replacing the whole sewer line on the road. In the warrant article. In the warrant article. Okay. Uh, how much of the beach do you think this thing covered? I mean, I mean how much well, of the infiltration area, possible infiltration area? Well, this, thing covered? this portion, portion of the study mm -hmm. that was done mm -hmm. was looking at a broad view and identified smaller areas of concern. There are some additional work that needs to be done to fine tune this, but these were the, the, the biggest, to get the biggest bang for the buck. They identify these as immediate fixes, okay. but there is still more work that needs so to be done. So, are we there. keeping track and shading in somewhere what we're doing, absolutely. so that we know what we left to do? Yes. Absolutely. How much is left over there at the beach to do? The, in addition to this, I would, I would say probably about thirty percent. This is a pretty compact area. Yeah. For, from what you say here, Batcock, Ross, mm -hmm. right? Are those the streets? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And almost all the. Sewer system we thought got replaced back in the about fifty percent uh, got replaced during the beach right. improvement program. Yeah, but that's, this is off of Ashworth Ave. These right, are the, the, the back streets. streets. Yeah. Yeah. But the back streets the back did because of funding issues. Uh, so about half was done then, and we still have about half to do, and about no, thirty percent no, no. of what's left to do. He's, 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 he's saying, Keith, that you've got maybe seventy percent, sixty-five percent done here of, of what there is to. Evaluate down there. There's two situations going on here. Yeah. There's one mains that are old clay pipe that are falling apart. Yeah. They're disintegrating. They're allowing infiltration into the system. Yeah. And then there's sewer manholes that are falling apart, and they're allowing infiltration into those as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm proposing to do with this 130. That that's the biggest bang for the buck because <coughs> when you look at the biggest bang for the buck, they're relatively inexpensive yeah, to replace a sewer manhole in 300 feet of sewer pipe. Yeah, no, I, I understand it now. Yeah. Now, why is it in the default budget as well? Hmm. Certainly not contractual. Christy, in the 14 budget. Are we looking at? I'm looking at. Uh, yeah. Because that's what we asked for in 2000. It was in the 14 default. 130? It's in the budget right now. Yeah, 130. 2014. I can't answer <laughs> why is. it was in the 2014 default budget. I didn't uh, make that, but it is. It's right there. That's why. 
That's yeah. You're, you're you're right. It's in the uh, 2014. It's in the 2014 budget, right there. Yeah, they one third. They carried that from year to year, which is there because it was in the 2013 budget. Well, the 2013 budget had 33957. So the question is, how did it get in there in 2013? Yeah, I'm talking about 013's budget was 33. The, no, that's what the actual. The actual. actual, was the actual, actual. Don't forget, 2013 we passed the budget. That was not a default budget in 2013. That's correct. But 2014 was 12. the default budget. Yeah, the actual spend in 13. Has, this I know, this but one the budget. thirty goes back a number of years. John put that in for smaller projects. Yeah. Must they did something. Levitt Road, replaced that sewer line, and they did Morningside Drive, and they've done a Lamprey Terrace in the High Street. They did 13. several small sewer projects. Rather than doing a million dollar project, they did. I think when he started, this was 125 a year, and then they upped it to 130. I, I don't know why. So you think it's probably in the default? But it's but it's been problem. carried in the budget under this sewer line maintenance for Long the time. last five or eight years or more, maybe ten. I don't know. Said both. So he's going to. That's why it's in a default budget because it was in there. Prior years. Well, it wasn't in 11 and 12. It had to be in 13. Yes, it was in 12. Yes, it was. It was 130 in The budgeted? 12. It was budgeted? Budgeted. Okay. He's kept it. We'll move on on this line, not him. I mean, yes. I mean, Keith, the it's selection it. a couple of years ago authorized you to do this much, yes. right? Yes. You did it. Mm -hmm. Then you came up with the money that needed to yes. be done, right? So why the heck are we beating it to death? I mean, it, you guys probably were on the board when you uh, authorized them to do it, and now we're moving on. I, I mean, it, it seems like remember. we micromanage. No, let's just move on. We're ready for a vote, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. We're just trying to clear some of the air. That's well, all. Let's not rush it. Let's have Thanksgiving. I'm not rushing it. I'm just saying let's not beat it to death. Well, it's best to clean up the questions now rather than having them linger until the next meeting and then coming so back. The questions six are times. self evident. Let's clean it up now. Well, it's not, it's not evident. All right. It's not evident. I think we've discussed this one enough. We've got an answer for it. I just have one little quick question. Does any of this include Exeter Road? No. 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 Thank this you. Is all I wonder if this should have been on a, a warrant article rather than a budget. It's a big number. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, rather I move it. that we vote. We Second. Excuse me. <laughs> I oppose right. that motion. I think the chair should call for a vote. The chair is ready for a vote. I, I, Made a vow of that I'm ready Amen. for a vote. We've, we've, we've killed this one, okay? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain. Yep. Same vote. Yeah, All right. So now we are down to. I remember that. Total sanitation. Total sanitation. There's a new number there, uh, Jim. 3372863. Am I right, Christy? Mm -hmm. What? 337283. One more time. Three three seven two eight six three. Moved by Jim Waddle, seconded by me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Waddell. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I can keep that one around. Um. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Don't worry. Why are you laughing? I'm the worst one. Because I made a stupid mistake. That's why. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? What are we? Do? What are we? What are we voting? Total sanitation. We're doing total sanitation. Well, did we did we talk about the Exeter sewer agreement or the wastewater maintenance? Why are we go? Why are we up to? Uh, yeah, so we just did that one, Jerry. No, we didn't do the exit. We didn't do the exit of sewer agreement. No, no. we were talking about that. Well, that was under the 289 motion. Yes. That's been in there That's forever. That's flat. Is there a point in? in <laughs> Not in, flat. He's up. What? He's up from 63, 65 to 7,000. I says, has there been a change in the agreement? The budget is the same. Seven. The budget's the same. The actual. No. The actual so is not done. Spent. The budget's flat. So the budget's, budget's flat. flat. There's yep. no point in discussing that. The line is total sanitation, which is up 8.33% according to the book. Okay. Slightly less when you take off the 7,200. Mm -hmm. Okay. Open second. Again. But since we are talking total sanitation, you can still talk about that, Jerry, I guess. No, I, I, I'm going to, I All know right. what I'm doing. Total I'm sanitation. Ready. Three million three hundred seventy-two thousand eight hundred and sixty-three dollars. John, you got that? Mm. Yeah, I favor the same thing. And opposed. And stay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, moving to a grand total for public works. New number there. Five five. five. Oh, go ahead. Is <laughs> Jim? You're, you're moving for five five three four nine four six, right? 
Yeah, I'm Wait second. Again. Wait a minute. Five, 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 five three, four, nine, four, <clears> six. Who <throat> by Mr. Waddell. Thanks. Okay. All those in favor? <coughs> Opposed? And Mike. Abstain. Mike, did you abstain or did you oppose? Opposed. Opposed. Please, please abstain. And Mike, um, abstain. I have my number <laughs> I think we're done, right? Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Thank you very much. And Mike. Thanks. Right. You want to explain all that stuff? I can better watch. Keep in mind, this is the third time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, guys. Last night, Steve asked about the Hey, we're not, was that the seven hour we're talking about? Gentlemen, we're not done. We're not done. Hello. We're not done. Okay. You're down to the minutes again. Drag them on. Fuck these guys. All right. Well, then we need a motion to adjourn. We adjourn. We adjourn. We adjourn. We adjourn. As soon as Mr. Waddell's like, well, then he would. All right. Motions were made. get 10 minutes. Excuse me. For a second. All right, all those in favor? Yes. Sure. All right. See you December 2nd. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. See you in December. <laughs>